everyone. <laughs> Happy Thirsty Thursday. Back on the Bourbon and BS podcast, we are here again with the lovely Dino Tripodis. I seldom get lovely attached to Dino <laughs> Tripodis, but thank you. Yeah. I will take it. It's because you're I on the radio t- for so many years. I'll, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take any type of term of endearment uh-huh. at this point in my life. If it's lovely, then I'll go with lovely. Why not? <laughs> well, it's good to have you back on, it's man. It's good to be back. Thank you, guys. With the Whiskey Business Podcast, go check them out. They're doing some great things. I've had some amazing guests lately. Um, but we'll get back into that um, a little further down the road here. Um, as soon as we get done sharing, we you know, encourage you to do the same. So please share. Please like. Please tell a friend. You don't even have to share it. Please tell a friend. That's how we build this thing. We really, really appreciate it. Good, Nate. All right. Mike cutting in and out. We're back. So, uh, episode 86, we'll get into a little bit more, but, um, yeah, tell us what you're drinking. Tell us what you're smoking. If you are, it's thirsty Thursday. So we appreciate everyone for tuning in tonight. Is there like a, is there like something for every day of the week? I know yesterday was, you know, whiskey Wednesday, thirsty Thursday. Is there something for frisky every Friday? Is there everything? Is there, taco, is, Tuesday. Is, is there taco Tuesday? Is there taco Tuesday? Taco Tuesday. Margarita Tuesday. Monday. Yeah. And what whiskey goes good with tacos? All of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tequila. <answer> tequila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not really whiskey, but whatever. <laughs> Mumble Monday. Um, uh, Sunday fun day. Sunday fun day. Sure I don't really have one day. for Saturday. We'll have to work on that. I know. I think Saturday just carries its own weight. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. Saturday. Yeah. I mean, first day of the weekend for most people. So College football Saturday right, doesn't really right. have much of a ring no. to it. But anyways. And let's be honest. If you booze on the weekends, okay, that's what the weekends. Yeah, it's the weekend. The, the really dedicated people are the ones that, that come after, <laughs> you know, a, a Mumble Monday. Yeah, or, or a Sunday or, Funday leads into yeah, Mumble, yeah, Mumble Monday. Mumble Monday, yeah, yeah, or Whiskey Wednesday or Thursday. Those are the... Those are the dedicated. I've never drinkers. heard Mumble Monday before. I just, I just came up with it just now. It's it's very, you're the feel, best at that. I feel, like, I feel like you've experienced that before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Mumble, mumble no, I, Monday. I think Kylie nailed it. Sloshed Saturday. Sloshed Saturday. She already okay. on there. Okay. Very, very classy as expected That's from nice. Kylie. Yes. But anyway, so before we get started on the audio portion, we always like to thank our sponsors, and we'll go that into that again once already audio gets started. But thank you, Tinderbox at Easton. Thank you, Altidus, and thank you, BS Cigar Company. Um, and we'll get into what they are providing for us cigar-wise this evening. And uh, we got a lot of good things going with um, a couple different companies, but Altidus, always the support there is amazing and very gracious of you. So thank you. Ready to rock, Steve? I'm all shared up. I'm going right. to do the same. I'm going to light up my cigar here. Cool. Oh, you want to? Yeah, no, go ahead. And so what it. are we on right now? Facebook Live right now? We're on yeah. Facebook Live. We're about to start uh, doing the audio. Yeah. Starting doing the audio? So yeah. Hide, hide, yeah, please do. Hello to all the Facebook Live people. Bobby Hirschman says, promise I will be good tonight. No, get, get after it. Get after it, Bobby. Was he bad last time? I, He's not I'm, Bobby. We have Am well, I now bad? we got the other Bobby oh, Crow. Okay. Yeah, now that's the other one. Now we're screwed. Thirsty Thursday, everyone. Episode 86. Oh, really? Yeah. All, All right, right. Stop the recording, Come everyone. On. Am I touching it? We don't know. I'm not touching it. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Bobby says your mic's not on. Okay. Am I on now? It's a bad pod. I don't know. That's the only thing I know how to say officially in, in, in technical right. language. <laughs> it's a, we good now, Nate. It's a yeah, clogged it. pod. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Yeah. All right, you know, you're at the beginning. Good. <laughs> Happy Thirsty Thursday, everyone. Episode 86. I'm Jake Sanders along with Steve Crane, and we make up the Bourbon and BS podcast. Not really an episode about whiskey, but one with. Oh, wait. Mm-hmm. Is that yours? Ah, I think it is. Is that I, your spiel, I, I, Dino? Wow, that sounds very familiar. <laughs> podcast not so much about whiskey as it is one with whiskey i don't care take it yeah <laughs> you're hearing tonight another with a lot more whiskey actually compared to yeah yes. whiskey business podcast yes. that's for sure yes <laughs> for sure for certain you're hearing the lovely voice of another great guest and returning guest Dino Tripodis of the Whiskey Business Podcast. I've never been a returning guest on any any podcast until this one. So really? You, it's it's new ground, yes. It's well, awesome. We're honored. Yes. This is my first return appearance on any other podcast uh, other than my, my own. 
<laughs> this will be three nights together and four podcasts between the two of them. Yeah. Because yours was a two-parter. Yeah. 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 The one you guys, guys uh, at over my at your house. Place. Yeah, yeah, the yeah that podcast. was great. Yeah, absolutely. I reposted that picture from the poker room to, great to, shot. to push. It was tonight. a great shot. That does look like, like you know, between, between our two places, we, sh- we should be like a, 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 a gang a of secret sort. ring of some yeah, sort. Some, some yeah. sort of den of thieves of some, with, yeah, exactly. with two great secret you know, locations to, <laughs> to, to plan our nefarious plots. We should have posted a picture about like the dogs playing poker, yeah, and then that picture because <laughs> they're about the same. They're about the same. It was definitely a bunch of dogs down there that night, uh, for sure. So, uh, anyway. but our little spiel is, is that we talk about whiskey, we talk about cigars, and we talk a lot about life, and that's what we think is what separates us from the rest. Sorry, Dina. It's okay. It's all right. I'm but all, I mean, no, there's room for everyone, right? I mean, yeah. that's how this works. Yeah. So. Um, Dino was gracious enough to bring an Angel's Envy cast strength of 2016. Yeah. We'll get into that a little bit, um, probably a lot of bit. And we'll get into the cigar of the evening, which is the Trinidad Espiritu. That's right. I'm surprised yeah. I got that right. Is that what I'm smoking? <laughs> you right? nailed it. Is that what I'm smoking right now? That's yes. what you're smoking yeah. right now. I'm already lit up as well. Yep. And I'll dive <laughs> into that in a little bit. And tonight's topic is going all in. So. That could have so many different meanings yeah. you know why we topic. picked it though one of the big reasons because you're when we were over at your place we were at the poker table and you right. were talking about all the stories of of the different poker days that you had and right. well more poker nights poker nights and mornings the, the por- poker nights that went into poker, poker days mornings. the por- yeah, poker yeah. mornings yes um for sure so yeah it was one of those things that you're right yeah the topic can go a lot of different places but with you being a big poker guy it was extremely fitting mm-hmm. to use that metaphor mm-hmm. absolutely and he actually and you would says think with all lot. the poker that I've played that I'd actually be good. No. <laughs> Not good at poker. You're just hosting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're a hell of a hell of a host. Uh, I try to be a good host. <laughs> Kylie says let the dick jokes begin, so that's nice. So that'll be oh, fun. Okay. Perfect. Right, Keep then. us posted on that. <laughs> <laughs> so who are our sponsors? Yeah, next? this is a, a time. So if you guys are listening on the audio on, on Facebook, we already kind of mentioned it, but uh, on the video, um, this is a good time to share it, tell people about it, rate us, um, subscribe. That's what helps get this uh, out there, and hopefully you guys can have uh, you know help expand the audience. But uh, as far as sponsorship, uh, the Trinidad is going to be, even though it is from Altidus, which is another sponsor. Uh, tr- uh, Tinderbox at Easton was kind enough to let us smoke this tonight, the Trinidad Espiritu. And we'll go into that a bit more. So every week they do the weekly cigar. So we just got a new shipment in uh, in Tinderbox at Easton in Columbus, Ohio. And so this week until Tuesday, end of business, this will be 15% off at Tinderbox at Easton. You can stop in. You can call us. We'll mail you some, whatever you want to do. But that's a great deal every week. So thank you, Tinderbox at Easton, for uh, sponsoring us with that and also extending that to everyone listening. We also have Altidus USA, which is, uh, again, who the Trinidad is through. But the second cigar from Altidus is Monte Cristo White Series. We've smoked it before. We've never featured it, but we've, ever, yeah. we've definitely had it on the podcast. <laughs> Great cigar. Yeah, Great it's cigar. definitely one of the top sellers in their catalog and at, at a lot of retail shops. And then also BS Cigar Company, which we've got all three sizes back in at the uh, Tinderbox. Thank goodness. And we should have a little bit more information on the BS Gold uh, going forward by the end of next week, if not by next podcast. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. And we Very got nice. Stogie Birds, too. Well, Stogie Birds, yeah. We do have a coupon code. So two weeks ago, Stogie Bird. Stogie Birds. Yeah, so Dino. Stogie Birds. <laughs> Stogie Bird. That box over there to your left, actually, off camera, is something that Sam Lucia sent to us. And then uh, you see the canisters up there on the shelf, that yellow, and then the other one there. Yeah, I got um, pranked. You got pranked, yeah. So uh, Sam was kind enough to send us that to feature and sponsor an episode. And up until, I want to say, another two weeks, you can try it up for another two weeks. But if you go on stogiebird.com and put in, in the coupon code bourbon and BS, all spelled out, uh, you get $5 off any purchase. Very nice. Yeah, it is. It's exciting. <laughs> Kyle's back in the garage. It's awesome. If you hear a lighter drop, that's content Kyle. It's great. Oh, all right. It's great having him back. I, I miss him back here. It is nice. It is nice. But. Yeah. Is Kyle your personal photographer? Uh, used your to be. Own, Among person. other things, yeah. Then, then we started have, having to pay him. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that happens. Now he's here very rarely. Yeah. Because you rarely pay him? Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any money. <laughs> we'll start out to work out a cigar trade or something yeah. like that. Off the books. <laughs> so, diving into the whiskey? Oh, 
I just did. Yeah. yeah. Did, you get, did you wake you up there? Yeah. It's, uh, it's it's a little hot going in. It's rich. Yeah, it 128. is. 128.6 proof. About uh, at the time, I believe in 2016, only 8,000 bottles of it were available. You are correct. And uh, it's, it's I, I always get so, you know, and I I hate this because I, my, my theory in life is to go in low with expectations and right. then rise to the occasion. Well, you're safer but, that way, right? Yeah, right. But then of course when you when you get a chance to get a bottle like that, you're you unconsciously your expectations are high. So, <laughs> well, yeah, there's I mean, the fact that it's limited, the fact limited that it's cash, cash strength, strength, it's, it's a the, yearly thing yeah. and then it's 180 it, bucks. Yeah. yeah, and the price tag right. on it, you're like this better be fucking good. Yeah. And it, and it is good, but I I got it, it it's it's good. It's good. It's good. It's it's it wasn't like I wasn't like blown away at first, but I've learned to appreciate it a little bit more. Now, how you've had years. this was about what? Half to 3 quarters full. That was uh, that was a little three. more than half full when I brought yeah. it over here. So that means that you've dipped into it over the last couple of yeah, years. Yeah, and I was thinking like you know I I hate to I hate to come empty handed anywhere I go and and last time I was here we brought some old Forester products and I was like okay and then I was gonna bring the nineteen ten till I saw Jake's little post about it. coming across a bottle of nineteen ten. Yeah. And uh, I said, okay, well, I'm not doing that. And I go, what have I got hanging around that I don't drink very often? You know, unless I'm treating myself. And I remembered that the Angel's Envy was available, and I also brought what I had left of the of the Booker's. That's really hot too. 129. Uh, yeah. So proof. Talk about going all in. You uh, definitely on, are going on, all on, in on proofs. And everybody says, and I know I'm going to catch grief from my whiskey business people, like. Oh, why'd you take it over there? Why, why, why didn't we <laughs> have any of that? On this. Why didn't we have any of that? Like, oh, they yeah. can have some of it. They know when they're there. They can have anything they want. There you go. <laughs> so there you go. I figured this was a good t- good time to bring it and share it because that's yes. what good whiskey's supposed well, to be. Well, you've had for. this several times. So how have you had it neat every time, or or have yeah. you had uh, yeah. added water? I, have I've, you? I've added gone a, an I've ice added cube. a cube to it. Okay, you did a cube. I did a cube to open it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And obviously, after the first sip, like you said, it woke you up. Um, yeah, the, the second and third sips start to go down a little smoother, and a that's, little. That's it the is danger rich. of any cast strength. It is indeed, my friend. It is indeed. <laughs> See, this is right up my alley. <laughs> you like your whiskey, you like me. You like your whiskey a little mean, which right? I didn't used to. Which, like when I first uh, started drinking whiskey neat, um, I remember that my uncle Dan had a uh, Elijah Craig, but the old bottle. Remember, it was originally twelve years old, um, and now that the barrel proofs are just twelve years. Um, but it was an old bottle and I thought that it was a uh, very strong, very hot, very oaky, um, mm-hmm. high Oak presence. So, but, um, angels envy cast strength, 2016. Um, so we all know and love angels envy, um, used to be really scarce here in Ohio right. about yeah, a few it's years ago. To be more common actually. Um, and, and I stopped stop, stop to think about it. I think that particular bottle actually comes from my brother-in-law actually as who, a gift. Uh, uh, well, he, I mentioned it in the last podcast. I think we were together at my place. My brother-in-law years ago went bourbon bananas. Yeah, you know, I turned him on to bourbon, and then it just became oh, an obsession right. with him. Yeah, and so that that year I think was uh, one of the one of the years that he came across that one. And then what I love about Thanksgiving in Tennessee is that my brother-in-law always says, you know, take these home with you. And he packs in what he calls the remnants. So I think that might have, that might have been a remnant that came back with me from okay. Tennessee after Thanksgiving. So it was already cracked when you, you brought it home? Is that what you mean by uh, remnant? Was, no, it was cracked on Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll crack them all. But, mm-hmm. So either of you guys, both being the, the whiskey experts, just a little recap of what Angel's Envy is all about. So, For those that don't know. Yeah, so Angel's Envy is in Louisville, um, right by the Cardinal Stadium, actually. So yeah. right across the street. Um, my girlfriend and I, Alicia, we went in to the... Back in January, I think, went to the distillery and took a tour. Very nice distillery. I've never been, is it? Uh, yeah. It's uh, state-of-the-art. I mean, it is definitely made for tours. You go there, and you there's like two decks, pretty much. and then the, Pictures look amazing. And the, and the second deck, pretty much, is all... The floor is all open, and it's just a, a perimeter loop, pretty much. Like a, a walkway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you... When you get to the, I believe, the south side of the building, you look forward, and it's this massive 
still and everything's either copper or gold and right, glass right. and brick and it's just beautiful so they do they do all their own distillery like distilling there they don't they don't source anything they, to so, your guys knowledge um so they do source they used to source the angels envy rye that we love so much do they? um That's however they too. have gone away from that thankfully but um, the, the rye is an interesting story, but the cast strength, for those that don't know, is basically a cast strength of their original expression that everyone loves. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley is the mash bill. Um, so what that is is that it's, a six, it's up to a six-year-old bourbon, and then they finish it for at least six months in a 60-gallon port wine barrel. So instead of watering this down or proofing it down, they keep it at cast strength and bottle it. And, and they're known for the whole port wine thing, right? Mm-hmm. They started the yeah. craze. They, that was they the, were the, they were the, the, they were the yeah, first yeah. kids on the block to to go after that. Yeah. And now they have a sherry one, which I would love to try, but haven't been able to yet. So they have a rye, sherry, and then their port that is their basic uh, finished bourbon. But so you're saying it's the same mash bill, but just different different age on it, and then yep. it's cast strength. Yep. Um, definitely tastes different than a yeah. bottle of Angel's Envy. Yeah. That's for sure. It's not light. It's got the potency behind it. It's got a really heavy oak note that I love, mm-hmm. vanilla. Um, interesting. I don't know if it's the proof wise or not, but I'm getting from the ch- uh, from the port. I'm getting a lot of cherry, and then kind of because of the alcohol, yeah, there's I'm a getting, sweetness there. I'm getting kind of like a cherry cola, almost like a cherry. Yeah, I can see Coke, that. if if you will. Okay. So um, it, it's it's really nice. I, I really enjoy it, and I appreciate Dino for bringing this by. Like I, I said, man, good whiskey with good friends, nothing better. Yeah, yeah, nothing I definitely better. get the, like that that kind of like you're saying vanilla, but I mean cherry. I don't know if it's cherry that when you say cherry coke or cherry cola or whatever um, to be off brand because it's not necessarily coke. But I know <laughs> it's like an RC cherry cola, but um, <laughs> it's uh, got the sweetness. But I'm telling you, you're right though. Just two two or three sips in that that burns going away. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it is that sweetness. I mean, it's it's not overbearing. No, um, that might be also in addition. You're right about the cherry, but there also might be a little bit of uh, a little pickup of, of chocolate and almond in there that you might be picking up. That's kind of almonds. Smooth, interesting, that, yeah. That's kind of smoothing it out a little bit as it goes I can down. See that? Yeah, it's finish. A lot of yeah, deep hints. dark fruit notes mm-hmm. because of the port, obviously, and then that keeping it cast strength is bringing all that out. I, I love it. It's really good stuff. So it'll be gone. <laughs> <laughs> and it came in a lovely, lovely case as well, which yeah, Jake, which, which Jake has oh, already yeah, commandeered. And, yeah. and, and what are you going to put in it? It doesn't matter. Snacks. I want to know. I want to know. Gonna put in it. Is it going to be like your like your lunchbox? No, I, that'd be <laughs> awesome, wouldn't it? <laughs> the Amazon might on it. frown on that a little bit. Uh, a lot of employers would frown on that, probably. You could turn it into like a makeshift humidor. You could do yeah something. I mean, it's <laughs> it's once you take the the. Whatever you call it, that ho- that houses the bottle, yeah. that frame, yeah, I don't know what the they foam call it. out of there, the foam out of there. It'll be a beautiful box for some. It's got a nice little lovely latch. Well, I always keep all my Booker's boxes too for yeah. some reason because one day when I have a room like yours, do you know I can make something out of it? You know what I mean? Do you really want a room like mine? Well, yes. yours isn't just a room; yes. it's kind of like your whole house. <laughs> it's a sprawling yes, room. Yes, it's a <laughs> sprawling yeah, collection I've heard there. That. I've heard that. It's amazing though. I've tried to to. to focus it all into to one room so yeah i, I stop hearing you got booze all over the house and no i don't it's all in one room right <laughs> one very crowded room it is crowded too yeah, it is it and is. the overflow room i mean it's like a, a room bit. and a half room and a half that's like all a right. nook like it's a room and a nook a nook let's go with nook yeah because it's a not nook. yeah it's not multiple rooms a nook a room sounds and a, nook. a nook sounds quaint this is my whiskey it's, nook yes my whiskey nook it sounds quaint I like it's, that. it's, it's, that's how i would uh, advertise it if I sold the house. The Whiskey Nook. Like, <laughs> That's like, your next podcast. Like a bed and breakfast, you know what I mean? A bed and breakfast with a Whiskey Nook, you know, for the mornings or the evenings, whatever. Let's adjourn to the Whiskey Nook, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Can we bring back the Southern Gentleman? Uh, <laughs> the, the <laughs> Georgia Governor. If we finish these two bottles, oh yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> for sure. That's our goal. So, I had a few questions before we get into the cigars, but Dino... I asked him before the, the podcast started, you know, what is he not allowed to say? About what? About your wonderful experiences that you've been experiencing with state liquor control in the state of Ohio. Yes, they have. And he's been, been on two amazing experiences, barrel right. picks, that is. I was at Buffalo Trace for a Weller pick, uh, a full 
foolproof Weller pick, uh, seven barrels, I believe, that will be coming to the state of Ohio. Obviously, when you break it down for the entire state, that's not a lot. No. So those are going to be in high demand. Yep. And uh, did the same thing this past weekend down at Jack Daniels. Which my, I know you loved. My, well, I am a... You want the Southern gentleman? I, <laughs> I am a Tennessee Squire, Jake. Uh, so I was able to. Uh, well, go. You're also a lover of Frank Sinatra too. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, they kind of go hand in hand, as all three of us are. Yeah. yeah I saw you just did the uh, Sinatra, Jack Daniels on the a Sinatra podcast. Select. Was uh, I realized that we'd ha- we'd had a lot of Jack products yeah. on the show, uh, regular green gentlemen, single barrel. Uh, the rye, uh, but we hadn't had the Sinatra on. Right. And after such a wonderful trip down to uh, Lynchburg, and the Brown Foreman people were just so so gracious, I thought that was my nice little way of saying thank you and salute. Oh, you absolutely. Know, to, and and our guest was was pleased as well. I mean, you know, every once in a while, whoever comes on the podcast lucks out and 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 gets involved in a really really good whiskey. Uh, I think we. I think we pretty much killed that bottle before the night was all said and done. No surprises. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's no a, surprise that's there. Good. Well, Dino met a good friend of ours, Che. I met Miller. Che. Met Che at Buffalo Trace. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Che's been on the podcast before. Yep. And he was also on the barrel pick with me in Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. So it was awesome. That's right. Whiskey but, Tango, right? Yep. Yeah. Or and Hotel Tango. Hotel Tango. Yeah. And Che, I think, will be joining Superintendent Jim Canepa when he returns to whiskey business to, uh, to do mean tweets. Uh, yeah. that 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 Canepa has been getting over. I love it. Over the last few years since he's been superintendent. And Canepa is superintendent of for well, people that aren't in the, the state of Ohio. Of, yeah, Ohio liquor. Yeah. yeah, superintendent of. Yeah, he's he's the man. He's, he's the done man. a lot. He really has, and I and and uh, why a lot of people will always grouse and complain that Ohio doesn't have this and Ohio doesn't have that. I can guarantee you uh, that there's been significant changes for the better. Uh, since he's uh, come into power, as it were. Well, look yeah. at Buffalo Trace. I mean, mm-hmm. look at Weller. Right. I yeah, mean, that was huge. Yeah. I mean, there was a time where Weller didn't want anything to do no. with, with Ohio at right. all. Nothing. Because they, they, they didn't like the fact that uh, what few bottles were coming in were going to the secondary market, and uh, maybe some of the restaurants were, were getting all of it. And, yeah. and it was uh, Canepa who... Who charmed them, and and now we now as you know we got people from Kentucky and Indiana crossing our border to come get our Weller. Well, yeah. Special Reserve is everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Like yeah. people aren't even interested in it. It seems because that's interesting that you say the that secondary market isn't as strong as it was in Ohio. Well, they should continue to gobble it up because um, I think that Weller will be raising their prices. Well, they already did with the Antique 107. Yeah, they, they did. Uh, Dramatically. Yeah, yeah. Is the gold foil coming with the Special Reserve anytime soon? The cork uh, and the gold foil? Mm, don't know. Maybe. Possibly. These not are one sure. of the questions you're not, not allowed sure. to answer? Not sure. Not All sure. Right. Can't All right, let me give, I figured uh, I'd get one whiskey out talk there. on that. Like, what, what, does it change anything for you? So like when, I, when we were buying the, the Antique 107 here in Ohio, it was about $26. Right. 26 retail. Right. Out the door, less than $30. Right. Now it's $40. Now You know what it is now? It, now it's what it's going for in other states. Okay. So this isn't this isn't a price gouging okay. thing. They're just the, the the price in Ohio that it's going to be raised to is what it it's it's just catching up to what it costs in other states. So what do you think? I mean, as far as is there is there functionality in your for for the viewers and the listeners? I mean, functionality for the the cork versus a screw screw cap. Because that's what it was. I mean, so for those of you guys who don't know, the Weller Special Reserve and it's, Antique 107, cap. they were screw cap. Screw caps. So immediately to a lot of people. 12. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people just, they, they equate that, I feel like, to, uh, you know, it's, it's a cheaper cheaper bottle, right? Fine. Go ahead. Think yeah. that. Don't, but I mean, to, you know, to, to, any, to you guys, I mean, open discussion. I mean, is there any difference as far as once you, once you cork it, once you un- un- screw it, and you put the screw cap back on versus putting a cork in there, give it six months. Any difference? No. 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 I mean, there's some arguments. First of all, good luck Good <laughs> luck letting a bottle of Weller Special Reserve last six months in my house to begin well, with. Well, right. There's yeah, two right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, But no, not at all. Not at all. Dustin says that it's already up to 50 bucks a bottle at his store here in, in Ohio, the mm-hmm. Antique. The Antique is so going up. And the up Antique again. is the one that people are gobbling up when it comes in. They're, get, they're getting be- that one first. And that's it's, because... It's so much better. I'm sorry. I think it's a much see, better whiskey. And, yeah. I, and I'm... The other way, I like, you like the, special. I reserve? like the special reserve a little oh, bit there's better. Plenty for you to drink up on the yeah, shelf there. I got I got half a dozen bottles at right. home. Well, 
Yeah, because every time I go to the store and one's available, I pick it up. But the antique went for fifty five on the secondary market for years, mm -hmm. so that's why. Right. So like people in Ohio, when that finally came on. And you were gaining a, a lot of money. Now. I know, but now, like I said, in other states, yeah. that's what the going price. Right. So, you know, that was, I don't know if you want to call it an introductory price, but now they're just catching up to where it is every place that else. That makes sense. That makes sense. So, yeah. So that's, uh, that. I don't know when the foolproof is coming. I don't have a release date on that for you. Uh, what, but, what, did you have a specific barrel that you enjoyed out of the seven? Or did you only taste seven? Or there, were there those? was, there was, there, we, we, no, we tasted more than seven. We, we, uh, on that. <laughs> On that trip to Buffalo Trace with the Weller, we sampled 21 barrels. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> little samples? Uh, little uh, samples? Well, little ones. Pours. Uh, little samples, but, you know, I, I did not spit. You know, I didn't swish and spit or, or So sip. should we No, spit. give me it. <laughs> so where did you pick? Like, so if you pick seven and you had 20, how many? 20? 21. 21. 21 to choose from. Wow. So did you. And 21, did, by the way, was was a great one. That's so, what I'm saying. Like, did yeah. you did you lean towards the last five no. to seven or did you pick kind of among one through seven, seven through four? When 14? I say there were 21, or there were 21 samples. If you're not, I guess if you're not spitting, I'm saying, like, yeah. they taste better towards the end. Toward, well, and and just because of that, and this is something that, that uh, when we were at Jack Daniels, uh, the gentleman who was running the tasting down there, Goose said, and it's a good, I, I did it down at Buffalo Trace, but he suggested it to some of the, the newbies that were down there. It's like, go back, you know. Go yeah. back and try the, the yeah, don't first finish one. Finish each one, right? Try the first one again yeah. when yeah. you come back, because I guarantee you it's going to taste a little bit different after you've had these other ones. Oh, absolutely! And, and and even the smells were different. You know, first we didn't we we went all nose with all uh, yeah. at, at Donna Jack Daniels, and it's interesting. And then you go back, and after you you nose up the the seventh one, you go back to the first one, and the nose is different. I mean, right. it's because everything has changed. So it's 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 a very fascinating process each and every step of the way but out of those 21 barrels <clears throat> of weller we chose seven and i everybody marked down their favorites and then it was kind of like uh whatever the majority was that's and awesome I, and i was happy to say how many that, people were there uh down at buffalo trace when we yeah. went down there i'd say about half a dozen of us maybe okay. six or seven uh maybe eight i don't know i don't recall. how many by the time you left <laughs> but, uh, we all we all left standing <laughs> and but i was happy that four of my seven made the cut is that so, right so that's awesome i was i was pleased about Do you guys that. use it like a, i mean i'm curious about this because i've talked about it on the podcast before when we were doing like the different blends for for different cigars mm -hmm. and you're doing like the the tastings and you're sampling a lot of different cigars i mean did you have a palate cleanser did you have anything that, just water. You know, in between just water water just water and did they Nothing. thief it like right out of the barrel too mm -hmm. like for you like you were in the rick house and oh yeah right it in. wasn't set up like jack daniels because it seemed like at jack daniels, jack daniels it was, was set up was already you, set up yeah. yeah but no at buffalo trace you know, we were we were pulling it right out of the barrel and and putting it right into a right into a glass. That was awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, thieving it right out, man, and pouring it just just that's, that's sweet. <laughs> well, Jimmy, almost uh, almost got a couple almost, comments here. Almost savage. Savage. Dude, almost savage. -like. I don't say that, but if you're trying to be young, it's... almost savage. -like. <laughs> It's just like you know. It can make you savage if you have twenty one. Uh, yeah, it would. <laughs> a lot of people that turn twenty one that turn savage it at the would. end of the night. But I'm not a. I, I'm not a. I'm not a. When I get when I've had too much to drink or I've imbibed too much, I don't. I don't go mean. Yeah, you're you're I a go, very friendly. I, yeah, I go friendly I go mellow. vibe. I go That's mellow. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to comment a couple things here uh, off the feed for for those that uh, are on the audio. Not following along on Facebook Live, but uh, Jeremy Harmon says, Science says twist tops are better for wine than cork. So he's equating it to that. Uh, but cork is associated with quality. I think it, it would be less difference for whiskey. So, I mean, that kind of speaks to your guys' point. Yeah. Who was that? Uh, Jeremy. Jeremy Harmon. Jeremy, and I'll say this, Jeremy. There is nothing sweet. The, one of the sweetest sounds in the world for me is that cork coming out of the oh, bottle. Oh, the cork pop. I mean, the, the cork pop <laughs> is just one of the sweetest whiskey sounds ever. And you don't get that. With a cap, it's a, it's kind of <laughs> like a tick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so just from the the romance of uh, the opening oh, bottle awesome. of whiskey, the the pop in the court. One more thing that uh, would benefit anyone listening to the podcast here. Eric is on again this week. Eric uh, Carico, he says, uh, you know, with the Age of Envy Distillery, uh, it's located less than five miles from uh, some of their. Airbnb homes that we were talking about last week. Oh, that's right. So if you mention this podcast when you book with them for any of the Airbnbs, you'll get fifteen percent off when booking. So keep that in so, mind. If so you guys Angels really... Envy 
has Airbnb. No, so so it's a Eric guy that listens to the podcast. Yeah, he listens to the podcast and he, he oh, offered. He has, it. The, he yeah. has the Airbnbs. I He's see. got a, a handful down there, and so he said if you if you mention the the Bourbon and BS podcast when you book with them, you'll get fifteen percent off your stay there. So if anyone's interested, either seek him out. Um, or and, you can always uh, reach us on any of the, the messages, and we'll get you the information. And are his B&Bs bourbon and breakfast? Yeah, he says Bed that and bourbon. All of it. <laughs> or, or, all of it. Or maybe you should have a B, B, and B. That's right. <laughs> There's three Bs. <laughs> three Bs. <laughs> Start advertising it that way. Those things will fill up in no time. Well, I'll tell you this, though, Dino. You, if Ohio comes out with an Eagle Rare pick, yeah, I'm in the trunk or something on the way down because i i'm gonna be down there <laughs> I, I i've only had the pleasure of accompanying them on on two trips thus far they have one more which i'm not uh permitted to say where they're going next <laughs> but they have one more coming up and i think that'll do it for the year but then they're going to start up all over again and that's awesome and uh they're they're developing and fostering relationships with these uh, amazing distillers and i think ohio and the products that we get it's going to continue to improve yes there are always going to be complainers and haters, and nothing's going, ever going to be that's, completely that's everything, right. Though. That's everything, though. You know, but well, normally it's the guys that already have everything; they just want more. Yeah, and they're also and they're also trying to adjust how some of these uh, bottles get released. You know, they're trying to improve on the raffle system. They had over seventeen hundred people come down to a giant eagle right. yeah. to to get the the Weller twelve. Weller twelve, you know? yeah, not it too was long a madhouse. Ago. You know, and it's like and, how many bottles do they have? I don't recall exactly how many bottles that they had it. 225 and there were a couple thousand location. people there. Yeah. Yeah, a But the funny people. part was is last year they only had like 60 and it was still that many people. Right. Right. So, so you know, they've they're, already they're, bumped that up they're, they're three trying, times. They're trying you know to bump I mean? it up, man. They're they're trying to do their best and they're trying to find ways to improve upon everything. So um, Yeah, Eric Black who actually uh, that old Forester we were talking about over there and the one that you tried that Tom Foolery yeah. Uh, before the podcast, they're part of the uh, the Cleveland Bourbon Group. I think it's co-op. Called. Yep, co-op. And uh, he said he has a Roseville Union pick coming up, oh, which will be very okay. interesting. Nice. That'll be different. very interesting. That'd be very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Awesome. So Eric, yeah, we'd love to try it. Thank you for very offering. Cool. So what about <laughs> what about? I might have read that wrong, but I think he, that's what he meant by that. <laughs> I'm gonna like that real quick to solidify that. Oh, perfect. What about this Trinidad? So, what about this Trinidad? What about the Trinidad? So, um, the brief story on this particular cigar, the Trinidad Espiritu, and it says series number one, which means that they are intending to do more on this 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 line. But Trinidad, for the longest time, was actually, first of all, a Cuban brand, um, which is interesting in itself because there's some conflicting stories on, on Trinidad as a, a Cuban line. Um, you hear that it's named after a city in, in, in Cuba. And then there's also a Trinidad family. And, and with that, the, basically, back in the 60s, late 60s, it was formed as a cigar brand in Cuba, but it was just there with, like, the Cohibas. So Fidel, basically, at that time, he was basically handing them out to diplomats and, and, and basically people of importance. And so you couldn't even get it until it was, uh, I think, 19... Um, i got to look that up, but it was in the 90s. Um, basically that they came out of like the secrecy and then they started actually being uh, distributed, which was shortly after Cohibas were as well in the 80s. So this is something that the, the Trinidad family, when they left Cuba, they wanted to, and this was going back to the 60s as well, they were fighting with Cuba that they were starting to do Trinidads with the Fuente family in the U.S. So that all started, and that's kind of the history behind that. Then the Fuente family went to the DR more, and they cut the project off. Then um, they, they revamped it. They, were, they won a lawsuit. The Trinidad family won a lawsuit with the Cuban government that they were able to, to do a Trinidad brand in the U.S. Um, because at one point, these were being sold as high as like you know, $500, $700 a cigar. A when cigar? It, when it was through Cuba before these were the, the diplomatic cigars. Let me, Not I, these. Can Not I, I ask you a, a somewhat related question? Sure. Well, just based on that, how much would you, what's the most you've ever paid for a single cigar personally personally i want to say it was in the 30s okay and, yeah, what, 30s. and what's the most you would pay for it? if there is there some is there some you know ark of the covenant cigar out there that if you could get your hands <laughs> not, on it not for me that that you would pay you, you would pay the price no matter what it was not for me i'd say you know maybe at a certain point um maybe 50 we did have a, a couple limited. well you have that two thousand dollar gurkha 
which that's... I would not pay two thousand dollars for. <laughs> right. <laughs> we sell the highest in, in our shop currently is a, a hundred dollar Davidoff. Um, we've had two different blends from them that that are hundred dollars, uh, and they sold. They've they've been selling. But I, me personally, I, I wouldn't do that because there's too many other great cigars that are that are reasonably priced, right? It's, it's kind of like it's kind of like bourbons. I'm just not any I'm, anymore. I'm not at that level, right? So like, I, there are plenty of there are, are plenty of good cigars. There's plenty of, of good bottles of whiskey. That for me personally, I'm the wrong person. Not the wrong person, but like, you know, with the fact that you brought this, like, this is tremendous because. You know, at this point in my life, my finances, where I'm at, you know, with the house in the last year and, and everything, sure. you know, I want to take vacations. My my financial freedom does not necessarily include. I'd rather buy a thirty dollar bottle, forty dollar bottle, say say once a week, as opposed to a hundred eighty dollar bottle because I really want to have it. Right. So I'm the wrong person to ask because I I feel fortunate to drink and smoke I- some amazing cigars and drink you know amazing whiskeys like you brought on. But if I saw this there. I would only buy it because I feel like one of my friends would be like, yeah, dude, I'll buy that off you. Right. And not secondary and flip no, it and make no, money no, off no, it. No, I'm going to no. be like, hey, Dino, Jake, you guys, I found this at the store. And one of you going to be like, yeah, um, can I buy it from you in a couple weeks? Or can I make you a couple payments on, you know, like a, a $100 <laughs> cigar or a $200 well, I feel whiskey? Even, He's like, yeah, whatever. Whenever you get a chance. I feel even better about it now that I realize that, that my brother-in-law bought that bottle when I started to think go. back on it. So really, <laughs> drink it all. <laughs> But I will say, though, I will say, you know, even like the trip to Cuba, when we're talking about Cuba, the best cigars I smoked down there were all the farm rolls. And I was paying, you know, five, six, seven dollars a cigar. And they are amazing. And and you can, yeah, you hand them to anyone that, that's easily spending, you know, um, when they're mailing them across overseas, they're, they're buying Cuban cigars because of the mystique. And there are some good ones out there, but they're paying 20, 30 dollars a cigar. And I smoked a couple of, you know, 30 some dollar Cohibas down in Cuba as well. And it was good, but I'd much rather buy a, a nine dollar farm roll that you know no one can get because of what I know goes into those as opposed to what goes into it through the the government. Yeah, I don't know as I mentioned before, and the last time I was with you guys, I yeah. don't know the intricacies of a cigar. I do know that you boys both enjoyed the uh, cigars that I gave you when you were at the house. And I think they were Cubans. They were yeah. well. They were they were rolled by a Cuban. I know that. Yeah. And I know that my, my my our mutual friend down in Tampa, Ulysses, who has a little cigar shop, right, uh, rolls them himself and, and packs them up. And everybody I've shared them with who are cigar enthusiasts said, "Can you get me more of these?" Right. They were very good. And thank and, you again. Yeah. Oh no, you're welcome. Uh, but, and I uh, think that's the the part of it is that obviously that that tobacco is limited, or or you just. You, you don't have the opportunity to just go to the store and buy right. more of the ones from Ulysses. Right. You know, like the farm rolls that I have left, you know, some of the guys are going down to Cuba in February, and I don't think I'll be able to swing it. And I really want to because I want to hang out with those guys. They've, they've made more connections. I mean, the last time that they were down there, one of our friends, Mark, uh, who's going down again, I mean, he described this, this person that they met a couple trips ago, Papo, and he is a farmer. He's also a roller, but he's not even in the main – you know the, the the big beaten path of of Pino del Rio. He's like off the grid even more. He's aging tobacco for at least five years, and then Mark was able to go out. He was one of the first visitors, I guess, to go out to their operation where they're actually rolling. Yeah. And he's describing the trip as if he's going in the jungle, you know, in Colombia to a, to a, to a coke operation. You know, so it's like they're they're like you know they go through all these you know different paths basically, you know, in, in the back areas of, of Cuba and then all of a sudden they come across this like more or less shack and there's people in there rolling cigars <laughs> and then they give me one to smoke and I'm like thanks if this was on my shelf in in our store I would be smoking these I'd be smoking it they yeah. don't exist but with the Trinidad it's it's interesting the way that this has come to be because basically Altidus one of our sponsors they bought the brand in 2002 so the name would have been later than that no, the the namesake. Or so they, earlier, they've I been guess. doing. No, that's what I'm saying. Like it all kind of went through these different things. Um, so the Fuentes joined together in '97. Back in '97, they Got started it. doing the, the operation again. Then they they bought it. Altidus bought it from from that 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 agreement. Mm. And then they've done most of the stuff through the Dominican Republic, through Hochi Blanco, which is someone that we've talked about before yeah. on the podcast, a major guy in, in, in the DR. And then this is the first effort that is an all Nicaraguan cigar. It's undisclosed because they're they're working with uh, another person we've talked about a lot is AJ Fernandez. 
So this is being uh, <laughs> produced by AJ Fernandez, who's got his hands on everything. We talk about it quite a bit on the podcast. He's like the MGP of the cigar world. Basically. Okay. Basically, right. yeah. That I understand. So this, they, they, if you look at the band on there too, Dino, um, the, the very colorful band. It is very colorful. So they kind of they, they threw it back as far as some like Caribbean art with yeah. those colors. Okay. And then on the box, it's it's more the same colors, but on the on the box, you have to kind of look at it a certain way. But I don't want to say it's abstract, but they've got these curves on it, and it's kind of the the front end of a of a fifties type, sixties type uh, coupe that's got like the big bubble, and then it's got a, a circle right. that's the headlight, and it's just something that they've done with this one that they really kind of put a lot of effort behind revamping once again now we're in 2019 they, they've really brought back this brand i think in a really strong strong way and you know how i love gold, <laughs> gold. i'm glad that they have gold on the band yeah it's a beautiful <laughs> yeah kind of gold leaf on there but yeah th this cigar has been selling like crazy i know nationwide so far it kicked medium it off body fast. what do you guys think of it uh, once again like i said i don't know that much about cigars but it's it's it seems uh is smooth the wrong word? No, no. Because it's it's not a harsh cigar at all. It's it's a pleasant smoke. Yeah. I mean, I you know, like I said, I don't smoke them that often. Um, I should, I sh because it's very relaxing. I don't know why I don't do this more often. Yeah. A little better than your Winston's. Yeah, the Winston's are more compulsive. <laughs> Seriously, no, they are. Cigarette sure. cigarette smoking for me is very compulsive. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a habitual type of thing. You know, I, I'll, I'll I'll light up a. A cigarette, even when I don't really need to or want to. How long have you been smoking cigarettes, do you know? I had my first cigarette when I was probably 13 or 14 years old. And then I dabbled, you know, smoked socially in, in high school whenever we'd go, you know, hide out in the, in the cave with the, <laughs> with the boys drinking 3-2 beer and that type of thing. And I smoked in college a little bit. I didn't really start smoking uh, consistently or aggressively till I was... Here's a smart move. So I was in my uh, 30s. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're an adult now. You can make up your own mind. Yeah. When I started going on the road as a comic, I started to smoke more. That's when I decided to go go Stress. full tilt on the that, smoking. Yeah. Go we all talked in. about this last time. Yeah, I think when so. We yeah. Were on, yeah. yeah. When we were on all whiskey in. business was that, you know, the moral whatever confliction with smoking or right, was, right that right, was one of the right, questions. Right. That was one of the questions. Yeah. 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 Even the first time you were like, well, when someone asks you a question, now, you how know, long ago? you light up a cigarette yeah well yeah yeah nate, nate, says, on there, yeah. nate says don't forget the dino power move the yeah dino power move which yeah, is lighting yeah. the cigarette yeah, yeah while you yeah. think about it and then you tell them how it really is <laughs> even that, if you don't but, know but you have to have everything you have to have the you have to have the zippo lighter oh you gotta yeah have the click of the lighter the yeah you need it all to they're complete, on the edge of the seat is what we talked about yeah, right yeah yeah, yeah. how yeah. long you been smoking winston's um here's the other thing too i am so so convinced i don't know if you guys have ever talked about uh past lives or 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 being oh, part yeah. of a different yeah. generation on your on your <laughs> podcast but i have such this uh, connection and affinity to, to old school things um i used to smoke chesterfields Jesus. okay yeah All right yeah <laughs> my grandfather smoked them and and i started smoking them in college because uh when everybody would bum a cigarette from you you know it would always most everybody smoked a, a brand of Marlboro or or some sort of menthol cigarette, and you're constantly you know hey man can I get a, can I can I get a red right yeah. like, hey man can I bum a cigarette and I go yeah and they go what are those and like <laughs> Chesterfield non filters uh, no never I'm, mind. Good. I'm good I'm good yeah, <laughs> now you, have, you, yeah so, you still have cigarettes yeah, in your pack yeah. <laughs> and then I and then I switched over to uh, to Parliaments for a while Parliament full flavors yeah and then an old school cigarette kind of made a comeback l and m's came back yeah and i i started smoking l and m's because i remember <laughs> those being part of uh my my childhood as well yeah, yeah. and then when winston and it's the only reason i switched over to winston's they went back to their old this part of the they the still have the the, the 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 logo the so you're a sucker for marketing yeah the they went back to the old font on the winston and that spoke to me. Yeah. So I, I it did. It did. It's the the font spoke to me and I picked up a pack and I went, Oh, and they're not they're not bad. They're they're pretty smooth. So I started You know, yeah, your generation is exactly who that was like aimed towards. Right. Because it remember you remember when it was like that. I remember that I said that and I also remember all the you know, I I'm older than you guys, so I remember 
all the the cigarette jingles and, oh, yeah. and the cigarette marketing. My mother worked in Tobacco Land at Sears. <laughs> With, tobacco land. That's, that's right, my friend. Back was in the that 60s, downtown? At, at the Sears, at, at the Sears downtown, and we it was, it was a suburb, uh, a suburban store. But she worked in Tobacco Land that's when, crazy. when when smoking was cool and good for you. <laughs> it was never good for you. <laughs> it, it was, in fact, so popular that a, that a mere section wasn't enough. They had to have an entire land at Sears. That was when four uh, out of five doctors yes, smoked Winston. right. You know, you remember some of the old. You don't remember some of the old advertising. I've never seen them. A, a, the, the camels used to have a slogan that would uh, uh, AIDS digestion. I mean, oh they, yeah, they, they would, you know. And, My dad said camel non filters. Right, right, or what? right. They would, they would. It, Absolutely. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. <laughs> Would you second that? That was now? your slogan? That, that was the slogan. That's what grabbed you. That's a Winston tastes good like a cigarette should, right? <laughs> well, you remember, like, even Joe Camel was a big thing, too. Joe Camel? Well, that Joe, was, what, 80s, 90s? And that, and that was that was more marketing towards the the... The younger generation, the, the, allegedly, the, the Joe Camel, allegedly, the, the Joe Camel was was for the younger set, just like you know, uh, oh uh, Spuds gosh. McKenzie and Joe Camel and and all those other folks. But yeah, Winston tastes good like a cigarette should, and and that's uh, why you still smoke them. Mm-hmm. Well, Did they, they have like Winston points or Winston dollars or? Um, they they Marlboro had the Marlboro points. Yeah, I never I never was a big Marlboro guy. I know Benson and Hedges did. I've said that before. Like I I think my brother and I probably could have gone to uh, college uh, with no loans mm-hmm. if my dad didn't smoke uh, you know two packs of Benson and Hedges a day. Benson and but Hedges we got were some the cool... long skinny ones, weren't they? Right. Well, a little they had, middle, they, they a had little millimeter longer one oh ones. I remember that. <laughs> well, no, a little millimeter longer one oh ones. Yeah, he didn't smoke the the one on one. I don't know. Oh, that laughing. was the jingle. I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Virginia Slims, yeah. But uh, no, we we have plenty of cool duffel dun, bags and dun, robes dun, and dun, clocks. Dun, 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 come to where the flavor is. Dun, That's right. Dun, Let it go. Dun, dun, come to Marlboro Country. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll smoke cigarettes and I'll be a cowboy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And of it. course, he died from lung cancer. So. Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> you'll have that. We made a movie about that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. What do you like the Trinidad, Steve? Well, <laughs> since we got it <laughs> Back in. Back to the cigars. <laughs> More Not a big Winston fan. Yeah. Um, but no, I actually do. I, yeah, I've said it before. I really like this cigar. I think he, he knocked it out of the park. And, and back to my point. This is an said, anyone smoke. This is a this is a compulsive thing. This is a very relaxing thing. And I'd be I'd be honest with you, fellas. Shit, I need to relax yeah. a little bit more on a day to day basis. So I don't know why. I don't sit on the front porch and chill out with this more often and a bourbon as opposed to these. You need us over there. I probably do. I probably do. <laughs> you owe me a glass, by the way, still. <laughs> now that I remember the, the, the last front porch. Um, yeah. You went the whole night. The whole That's night. That's true. A two-parter podcast and then th- three more hours on the front porch. And I don't think it was three. It was you're it right. It three. might have been four. It might have been three in the morning. <laughs> it, might, it, might, it, was, yeah. it was late. It was late. Because <laughs> I Ubered home. I, mean, I know. <laughs> I know you did. I insisted. I, that you yep, broke. Yep. And you, right to the very end, and just at the very end, it, she slipped and oh, smashed a glass. I'm and sorry. I'm only kidding. Because what do you know what I did? Rather than have uh, a set of three, I broke another glass to make sure. It you got a pair now? <laughs> <laughs> you like the even numbers, do you? I did. Did you mean to break the third? Uh, no, I did it on purpose. Oh, okay, okay. I, I just, just want to clarify that. Obviously. I couldn't stand having three of them. You know, if I didn't have four, I didn't want three, so I broke another one, and now I'm down to two, and now I'm good. See, it's funny. I had so a set. Even. Yeah, we're good. You're okay, the only cool. kidding about the glass. You don't have to replace it. I broke another one to make it. Well, we brought even. two bottles over to your place you last did. time. You so, did. Yeah. You did. I mean, you kind of returned the yeah. favor here. Yeah. Jake's funny with that, though, because he, he's kind of the same way as you. I had a set of five glasses actually like this. Right, beautiful glass. Do you remember this? Yes. This was, I think, uh, so we have the Southie Movie Marathon. It's something that we do and every before year. Before I started drinking out of Glen Cairns, I love those glasses. Yeah, this is like just a classic those are glass. My favorite um, glasses. That and he has. I had five of them, and we were in the garage at the old place, and and someone knocked one over like this. Someone? It, no, it wasn't. It wasn't either of us. Oh, no, okay. it was actually. Uh, I think it was Hockey Dan, right? Hockey Dan. Hockey Dan. Yeah. He's been on the podcast before, but uh, Hockey Dan. And, and Jake from across the the garage saw it happen, and I was just kind of looking over. I was like, "Oh man!" Like he broke a glass, and Jake just gets pissed. He's like, "That's a, 
that's our favorite glass. Like it's like now all of a sudden it's like he he has ownership to this. And it turns out I had five, so now I, I automatically had four. So it worked See, out. I don't know how <laughs> it was you a bad I don't know omen. how you could stand not having six, only five. I mean, it, 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 it makes no sense to me. I didn't realize having it. Having three think. made me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I literally well, friends did it that like, night. Really? That night when you broke that one glass, she goes, "Oh man, I'll we left glass, and you just and threw said, it down." Don't worry about it. I said, "You know," and I went inside the house and I went, nah, "Screw this!" And <laughs> I can't sleep like this. <laughs> and I, yeah, I can't, can't sleep, sleep with having no. three. <laughs> And now I have two, and it's nice, and it's even. I guess there's a little bit of uh, uh, OCD in there somewhere where Definitely. I can't have three. I mean, guess. guess just a little bit. You guess? I guess just a little. You something. broke a glass because of that's a, because there were three. The prime <laughs> number. Yeah, now there's two. Now there's two. Yeah. <laughs> if you only had one left, would you just? The only one glass I have. There you go, right. The only one glass I have is my my grandfather's. Uh, Little jelly jar wine glass. All There's right. only well, one of those. Sentimental value there. Sentimental value. That's yeah, the yeah. only one of those that I have. Otherwise, no, man. It's 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 got to be even numbers. Um, That's hilarious. <laughs> no, it's kind of sad. <laughs> well, I say hilarious, but what I mean is. <laughs> you mean sad? It's <laughs> being nice. Yeah. Just hope you don't cut yourself when you do that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right. I. I mean, uh, going back to the Trinidad for me, I think it goes really good with this whiskey, don't you think? That that's honestly, I'd never had this for obvious reasons, being a, a pick, you know, or, or or a limited edition rather. Um, I think this cigar. Not only do I like it, but I, I agree with you. I think this cigar will go with pretty much anything. It's not going to overpower. It's not going to do. Anything. I mean, it's it's going to go with any any whiskey. I think. Yeah, that's true. Because it's that medium, that classic medium, medium body. body. It would go with most bourbons just because of the the creaminess. It doesn't. The the flavor is much richer than a medium body. I would think. I think it's got or I would that say. that kind of woodsy. It's almost a, it's got a little cedar to it, but I think that's kind of part of it. Is that it's this like kind of yeah. woodsy, smoky. And it goes well with oak, don't you think? That's what I mean. I think that's why it goes it, well with almost any yeah. whiskey. Yeah, it's Because really you get a lot of those flavors that will complement it. And it does, even with this, and I'm not obviously drinking this all that, that quickly just because of the proof and, and because it's something I'm trying to enjoy here while we talk about it. But um, I'll have a little more. Well, I'm just saying, when you have, a, when you have a, a sip of the glass and then you take a puff of the cigar and go back, it, you can taste both. Yeah. Which I can. think is a good combo. We've kind of been hitting that more and more with some of the combos we've had recently is that when you're, you're – as long as you can taste both when you go back and forth, you don't have to, like, set the glass down for, for several minutes just so you can taste the cigar again and vice versa, that you can you stop smoking so you can taste the whiskey. This is one that definitely, definitely uh, – it'll tag team it, you know, just kind of hands off to each other. I like it. I like yeah. You guys ever smoke a pipe? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I was given one by one of our good guests and good friends, Brad. Uh, he got me a um, what's that brand? Of, brand Peterson. Of, he got me a Peterson, Peterson from, from Ireland, Ireland itself. Yeah. And he brought it back, and it's really nice. Yeah. But I we, we dabble into that some a little bit. Yeah. Steve doesn't really. I do actually. I've got a couple of my grandfather's pipes, so I have a, a the one I smoke out of. I keep at the shop, so. And I'm more of like a like when it turns to fall, I'll probably light it back light up. The pipe, I, yeah, it's, I, I I'm a seasonal a guy on that. Though I always, every time I, I I light up the pipe, I feel like I've got to tell a story of some sort. You know, <laughs> some some fictitious trip to the Congo <laughs> when I'm smoking the. Pipe. Wouldn't that smarter. be more of a southern gentleman than anything? <laughs> So there we were in Africa on the Congo and light up, light up and the light up. And you do your power move with that. Yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. light the pipe. <laughs> Someone asks you a question and all of a sudden you're packing the pipe and you're you're breaking out the match. Oh, yeah. It's like five there's, minutes oh, later. They're yeah. just like, they're there's staring all, at you. There's like, did all, you, guy, there's did you hear scene, me? There's a whole scene there, man. Oh, yeah. There's a whole scene the there. The camera's the panning pipe. as you know goes around. Yeah. I can already yeah. see the oh, handbook. Yeah. Dino's power moves. <laughs> Uh, 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 I'm more of a pamphlet. <laughs> Short is it <story>. trifold? <laughs> or is it? It's not front and back, that's for sure. Is that a whole book? You know, uh, Got a lot of pictures on that pamphlet. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of filler. Oh Nate. man, funny, funny, funny. Did you say this cigar was blended in collaboration with AJ, or, or AJ is actually making this cigar? It's coming out of AJ's factory. So we mentioned when uh, Josh Bentley was on a, a few weeks ago, the Raf- Rafael Nodal, not the tennis player, um, but he's the guy, he's basically in charge of all of the uh, tobacco, uh, basically all the, the production of the brand, including Trinidad. And so he worked with, with Hochi Blanco before on this, 
and, and now he's working with AJ. So yes, there's a little bit of a collaboration. I don't know how much the, the representation from, from Altidus with the Trinidad name is influencing what AJ did. I don't know what, what the relationship was when they were blending this or if AJ was basically, you know, they said, hey, AJ, we want you to do this project. And he came up with several blends and then worked with Altidus, much like he did with the, the Upman Nicaragua. He's done with the Romeo San Andreas. Those were actually done through Raphael and, and AJ as well, as far as that, the collaboration, at least with the, the mines. But it's all, from my understanding, it's, it's all tobacco from AJ. It's out of his factory. He's doing everything on this cigar. Because I'm surprised it doesn't have his name on it. He's been doing that more and more. Like that the Romeo surprising. San Andreas. Good point. Romeo San Andreas is, is another cigar that doesn't have anything on it. Um, I, I want to say maybe on the bo- bottom of the box, it does say AJ Fernandez on there. I mean, they do already have a secondary band. So, I, it, at you this know, point, normally the secondary band, like the H. Upman, yeah. A.J. Fernandez, the secondary band, it says his name, and that's it. Well, the other Trinidads, when Hochi was doing it, you know, the other Trinidads that I don't even think many of them are, are being produced anymore, it, they never had Hochi on there. It, it was it was kind of that old school thing where they're, they're doing another factory, but it's it's an Altidus product. So it's a Trinidad cigar, but it's it's being made by A.J. And, and in this day and age, I mean, really, when you see it on the shelf, if you're into cigars, much like we talk about the whiskeys, this is something that, you know, when it's sourced out, you know, MGP we mentioned. Right. They don't say MGP anywhere really big on the, 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 the label or anything like no. that. It's it's a it's, it's an angel's envy rye. But when you look into it, you read it, and then you go online for five minutes and do a Google search, you're going to see everything AJ on this. You know what I mean? As far as who they're working with on this project. Because... Frankly, I think they're they're really proud of it too. Is that they're working with a name like AJ? Yeah, because he's he's got the hot hand in the industry, just like MGP does in in the the whiskey industry. Yeah. Well, um, it, it goes back to the old adage of perception reality. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you got that big name behind something. The perception is, well, this is going to be good. Well, yeah. and you have the other side of it, right? You talk about generations, Dino. This is something where someone that has been smoking cigars and they're in their 50s, 60s, 70s or whatever, and they come in and you say, have you tried the new Trinidad? They don't care about A.J. Fernandez. They see Trinidad, they recognize Trinidad, and they're like, oh, yeah, I liked, I liked the Trinidads or I like Cuban Trinidads. And they just, in their mind, that name justifies buying it and smoking it. And therefore, that's when that will sell that time. And then the other people that don't, I don't really like Trinidads are like, oh, this one's made by A.J. Fernandez. And they're like, oh, yeah, I will try that. So there's both sides of it. You got to know your customer, and, and again, I mean, if you're buying online or, or you're going into a brick and mortar that you don't know, you're going to do the research anymore. It's just like buying a car anymore when you walk into a random cigar shop or whatever. You do all the research before you go to the dealer, before you make that call. You do all the research. You go on KBB or NADA or whatever it is, you know, car gurus, whatever, and you you already know possibly as much, if not more, than the salesman when you walk in. Maybe you do. Well, <laughs> I, I hate buying cars. Oh, I fucking hate it. Uh, I hate it. Yeah, you've had the same car oh, how many I, times? Uh, I just, uh, yeah. I, I just, like it. Same model. Trade, I just go in and I lease them. I yeah. just, uh, we switch keys. Bye, Kyle. Thank you Bye, for being Kyle. here. Thanks for taking some pictures. Yeah, if you guys see the uh, pictures on any of the social media, it's all from uh, Kyle. Yes. Yeah. Which is awesome. I like buying a car. I like to fight. Uh, no, no, I hate you it. You would. I hate the process. I would. <laughs> would. I would. That's why I was a terrible, well, other than the fact that selling graves sucks, but. <laughs> well, you wanted to fight them? No, oh, it you just sucked. You want to beat them like, down? Because I, no, it sucked like for me because I know if I was on the other end, yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I was thinking in the back of my head. <laughs> buying a grave like is like buying a car? Well, it's you're still buying something. True. I, th- yeah. I think of this. Have you ever seen Shameless? Uh, yes. No, Liz is trying to get me into that. Did show. you ever see the episode of um, the the woman? She was burying her mother. It's like far. A- anyways, she goes in <laughs> to this funeral home and she's like, "What's the bottom line? How basically what is the cheapest that I can put this woman in the ground for?" <laughs> <laughs> right. And they joke and they're like, "Well, we have like a cardboard box and you could set it on fire in the back." <laughs> <laughs> backyard or something Do your she's own like cremation. no seriously <laughs> and that's i mean literally that's how it was wow so like being on the other end of that like trying to sell something was tough but besides that <laughs> no get Can me be. from point a to point b just uh, no hassle just we we've, no, we've talked up. about this on the podcast before yeah. as, a, as a real quick side story the two things that that th- at least in the u.s that you you barter like everything else is like if you come into the cigar shop and you're like um you know pipe guys will do that a lot they're like oh is that your best price and you're like Yep. 
you know, $160 pipe. You're like, well, what can you sell it for? It's like, look at it again. You're like, $160. $160 they yeah. try to barter. <laughs> they try to barter because everything else, you go to, you go to a grocery store and it's like, I mean, maybe it's on sale or whatever. We don't go up to the cashier and on like the, the, you know, the, the 18th thing that they're scanning, you're like, hang on a second. Can you do any better on that? <laughs> on those potatoes? Can you give me a little bit like yeah. off? You know what I mean? Cucumbers were three for a dollar. How about four? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that doesn't happen. But the two biggest purchases, real estate and cars in the U.S., we just, as a society, we're like, you know what? Yeah, let's barter. Let's barter on that. I think it's so messed up that you have to do that on that. And you, Jake, love it. Yeah. I can't wait for you to buy your first house. Oh, it'll be fun. <laughs> it'll be Alicia's fun. Alicia's got wide-eyed back there. Yeah, don't give her any ideas, Steve. Because <laughs> I hate it. Yeah. Ready to go into our second segment here? Absolutely. All right. All right, so Nate's saving it. Yep. So, this time, for our live guests and viewers, please share this. Please like it. We appreciate the viewership. Um, give us uh, some of your feedback and comments. If you have any questions for Dino about barrel picks, life, cigarettes, <laughs> <laughs> shoot them. <laughs> One of those I'm not going to know much about. <laughs> life. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Perfect. Well, I've got a Sadly, quick yes. question kind of as a bonus for our Bonus for the video, for yeah, video absolutely. Listeners. Now, last time you did this, Nate, we should have kept it going. So, do you before you ask. Do it. All right. So you guys were talking about you can ask again if we need Dino to. had brought it up you know buying an expensive cigar or an expensive whiskey when you could buy something that's cheaper and buy more of them like would you rather spend a hundred and eighty dollars on one bottle or would you rather buy four forty five dollar bottles I'd rather buy four forty fives why because I know that the four forty fives that I'm buying are going to be good whiskey. I know I'm going to be sharing them with my friends, so uh, more is better. Uh, I'm not saying I won't at some point buy the $185 bottle of whiskey as a very special bottle, but it's not going to get cracked open socially as much. You know, it'll be safe for those special occasions. Yeah. And quite frankly, whenever my friends come over to have a cocktail with me, I consider those to be special occasions, right. and I'm going to have more of the 45s than I am of the 185. So, you know. Because yeah. I, I do the same thing with cigars. Like, yeah, I can sit there and I can buy, you know, a Padron 1926 series for, you know, $23, 28 Right. Or I can sit there and buy, you know, two $12 cigars and get a longer smoke time. Is Are they necessarily going to be as good as a Padron 1926? Probably not. But they're going to be damn good cigars, and I'm going to smoke two of them instead of one. What do you think, Jake? Um... I don't know. It. I always hate answering questions like with depends because everybody does that. But but it, I, it factors in. I, it, it yeah, does. Absolutely. It does factor in because I. I think. I don't know because I'm with you, Dino. Where I'd rather have, like the forty five dollar ones or like four forty five dollar ones and be be happy as like daily drinkers. Mm -hmm. But then I think every once in a while, um, like I, I have a few bottles that. Like, all my Boone Counties were $100. Those are special bottles. And those are very special bottles. And you open them, though, right? You open them, you share them. <laughs> yeah. But you I, don't share them as frequently and as oftenly as you would a $22 bottle of Weller. I he, had... I he had, drinks them on his porch. Yeah. That's, why, had, <laughs> that's why he doesn't share them as much. I had seven of them, and now I'm down to three. Yeah, see? So, sure and, and I honestly, yeah. most of them... Cool. Yeah. yeah Please, yeah, no. Absolutely. absolutely. Cool. Honestly, most of them... I just want to make sure. Um, my mom would like to try some of that. To Dino, Nate, um, but I would insist upon it. <laughs> but um, I think, Absolutely. I think with the, uh, I don't know. I, I'll be different. I'll say I'll buy the one eighty. I'm not See, saying I won't buy the one eighty, but day in day out, you know. No, not day in and day. Four no, out no, no, five no, no, times, no, no. I'm going to buy the nope. the four forty fives as yeah. opposed to the the one eighty. Well, yeah. I'll answer like this. I mean, I think Jake, you hit it on the head when you say something like as a daily drinker or as a daily smoker for, does that wake you up I, <laughs> yeah my mom's i think clear <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you yeah. got to be careful now that is the highest proof that she's ever had there you go <laughs> that's true but yeah we have i'll say this though is that you know when when you, we have to sometimes remember 
that the audience and and, and the the given company here is we water. typically smoke cigars daily. Right. We typically will at least have a glass daily. Um, so when you're looking at it, I think a lot of people that go into a liquor store or or, or a cigar shop because I see it more often, they're not smoking every day. They're not drinking every day. They they have a bottle or two at the house for company. It's a special or, occasion in itself. Yeah, I mean, like they they may have a bottle of like Jack Daniels, and then they might have a a, a nice bottle. That if they are celebrating, if they had a sure. really rough day, they crack this sure. again and have one small glass. That's their their drinking habits. That's the, their lifestyle. They're not necessarily. We look at it as like, yeah, we'd rather have like you know four forty dollar bottles because that means that We're I'm not a daily consumer. Yeah, I'm not drinking a hundred eighty dollar bottle in, in a week. You know what I mean? It's like this bottle might last. Probably will last a lot of people if that was their only bottle of whiskey in their house. Not necessarily people that that always listen to this type of a podcast, mm-hmm. but they they this would last a whole year, right? As the only bottle of even liquor, in or the even house. longer, right? But they when they would do it, they go in, they're like, all right, one hundred eighty dollars. That's not bad because they think they're going to have it for a year or two for holidays, for sure. special occasions, whatever. So um, I think that 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 when you say the depends thing, I think it's more of. What is your actual lifestyle when it comes down to smoking cigars? Have- you buy a thirty dollars cigar, you you know that you like a Padron, like Nate said. I mean, it's like you know you're going to do it, and this is my once a month or twice a month thing. So they're spending sixty dollars a month on cigars, but then people that smoke cigars every day, if they're spending sixty dollars a, a week no. or every few days, now all of a sudden they want bang for your buck a bit because right. they're smoking two, three cigars a day. I mean, that's why every every good whiskey drinker i know has a what they call a a daily go-to yeah. you know something that's Absolutely. reasonably priced and there you go you know heaven hill. Up to heaven hill yeah so it's something that tastes good and is reasonably priced and is not going to break the bank on a regular basis so. absolutely eric says he has a 213 dollar or as oh i'm sorry 213 bottles i usually share a pour with guests yeah oh, wow 213 bottles that he shares i, I with, guess with, with the guests he says with guests yeah he says you guys should do a road trip, which I'm leaning more and more towards. <laughs> tell I think that's taking what he's advantage to get of the 15 percent off one of the uh, Airbnbs. <laughs> tell, in tell 213 him, bottles. Yeah. Tell him it might feel better if it were 214 or 212 <laughs> with two oh, glasses. Jesus. <laughs> well, you got to go down there and help him out with that. That's that's the invitation right there. <laughs> and you got to have two glasses. <laughs> yeah, two straighten glasses. it out. Or four. Or four. Or Just four. even numbers. <laughs> Six, <laughs> eight, ten, whatever. <laughs> He said they can accommodate 16 people. <laughs> there you go. At least that's an even number, right? You need 16 so glasses. You're good. Oh, one of my brain's going to explode. So we right got now. Steve, me, you, Che, yeah. Greg, John. John. Yeah. We could fill up that list really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, Nate, Nate, Dustin. Dustin. <laughs> um, Hockey, Tenderbox might have to shut down for a Hockey week. Dan. I'm still getting over that one. <laughs> hockey Dan. Everyone's got, <laughs> everyone's got Does nicknames. He, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> no, oddly enough, he doesn't play hockey. He doesn't play no, hockey? No, I'm just kidding. He does. He, he does. does. <laughs> He's a goal. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Good. <laughs> All um, right. We ready. I always wonder how people get nicknames like that. Yeah. I don't have one in front of Dino, except dumbass. <laughs> dumbass Dino. <laughs> We're talking about nicknames here on the break here. So. Oh, I know. I know. I'm, I'm leading it back in because I'm talking about dumbass Dino. So going. Thank you. Thank you very much. All in, Steve. Going all in. Going all in. Which we are tonight. We got Angels Envy Cast Strength and a Booker's. CO4 that is it sounds like an explosive part of it is very flammable <laughs> proof. Yeah. yeah very flammable it yeah. probably is explosive what what were you thinking when you said this with well, Dino being a so, guest yeah no I mentioned it earlier I mean like uh you know we did our our podcast over at his house at down in his basement uh and it was at a poker table and he started uh, explaining that you know over the years it's it's had a lot of guests at the table and uh it was something that they did on a regular and so being a big poker player, you're, you're thinking about life topics, and with having Dino back on, and, and so when 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 we were talking about this topic, and Dino was the guest, not only was it that that's a good metaphor, obviously, with the poker and the card playing sure. and all that stuff, because that's that's a metaphor for life when you're going all in it in, is. A, in a card Absolutely. game, obviously. Um, but then I think about you know kind of what I know uh, of Dino. And you can go back to our, our previous podcast that you were on. You can go to the Wh- Whiskey Business podcast. Um, but, you know, with different stages of your career, if you want to start with the occupation or the career side of it, life specifically on the career side, I mean, 
24 years doing radio. Right. All the while, before that was, was stand-up. you start up, started stand-up, but did you still stand-up. did that. Still, still, I still kept my hand in it and still try to keep my hand in it today. And, Not and, as much. Yeah, and now, post-radio, retired. Right. Now you from, got the from premise. the radio. We've got the, 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 the premise is an offshoot the of the, the whiskey business podcast. You're doing yeah. the you're doing the, the the trips down to to Kentucky. Those those just have been fortuitous. But my point is is that you're the type of person it seems just based on that little synopsis. Right. Is that when you do something, I would assume, and this is kind of what I want to know is is like you know as far as going all in and stuff like that. I mean, you, you did that in different stages of your life. Right. It wasn't just like, you know, maybe I'll do stand up. Maybe I'll get into radio. Correct. But while you started doing, you know, radio, you started thinking like, you know, this is okay. I really don't want to wake up this early to do this, this, you know, morning no. show. Um, and you, you started, you know, you didn't start thinking like, what else could I be doing all the time? You, you, you embraced what you were doing, to the point of enjoyment, it seemed. The first year of radio, I was uh, I was probably uh, wishy washy because I didn't think it would last. I think I shared this with you on the you last did, podcast. Yeah. yeah. But once they said, you know, we, we would like you to be the new morning show, and and offered up a a four year contract, all in, all yeah, in, all yeah. in at that point. A little yeah. safety there. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, not even the safety, just the fact that once I once I agreed to sign a four year contract. I knew that I wasn't making any. I wasn't. I wasn't going to leave six months later and go back to Los Angeles and continue to pursue stand up. I made a commitment. I was all in at that yeah. point, and I was going to ride that train as long as they would let me ride it. And it ended up being twenty four a twenty four year ride. How so, old were you at that point? Uh, thirty. When I first came to Sunny, I was thirty four. Yeah, thirty four years old when I first came to Sunny. Yeah, I think so. Thirty four years old. Yeah, and when they offered up the, the contract, uh, a year, so so, so thirty five. Yeah, you know, and uh, sh- I mean, shit, I didn't, you know, all in. I didn't. That's a huge uh, decision, though. I, I mean, buy, that's a career I shift. My, I didn't buy my first house until I was almost, uh, you know, forty years old. Why? Uh, one, I couldn't afford it. Yeah. Two, um, didn't know where I was going to be. A yeah. house didn't make sense. At that point, I was a, you know, I was a comic on the road. So, you know, I was on the road 45 weeks a year. It didn't make sense to have a house that I had to maintain and take care of. An apartment worked. And then, but once I, you know, after the first four-year contract and I signed another four-year contract, right. I go, well, maybe it's time to go Let me all ask in you, were you, the house. Were you the type of person, because cause I'm curious, when you were doing that and, and you weren't really sure, you weren't all in, and you're saying your, your apartment life, did you decorate your apartment? Mm-hmm. Completely? Mm-hmm. Lots okay. of Frank Sinatra pictures. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, the funny story is, like, we when we, speaking of poker, um, the, the the Monday Night Poker game started at the Funny Bone when it used to be at the Continent, and then they asked us to, to leave uh, the Funny Bone and move the game, and I offered to move it to, to my house, my right. apartment. So we started playing in this little apartment I lived above. Uh, we used to be Clintonville Hardware on uh, Como and High. There was a little... Uh, a little two bedroom apartment, living room, and we played poker up there. Then I found, get what's that? Get, get closer. closer. Okay. Yeah, then I go. found uh, sorry the the landlord who had that apartment said my uh, my property manager is buying a house, and I need somebody who I trust and like to move into the property manager's apartment, which was this huge apartment. I mean, huge. It was like it was, yeah. it was as big as a house. It was probably. Uh, 1600 square foot wow you know, you know wow. Apart, apartment and uh we, you know so when you say decorate i noticed in the basement that the basement was exactly almost the same size uh this room in the basement and it was a, it was the same size as the living room where we played poker in my old apartment so i turned that space down to the <laughs> to to the to the clock on the wall. I, it, it, when they walked in to play poker that first night at my new apartment, yeah. they knew they walked right into the exact <laughs> same no room that they played in when we used to play. Yeah, in you're the not OCD with, at all. Yeah, uh, well, uh, but but it was also kind of like you know, it was paying homage. But, uh, yes, it was more paying more uh, uh, an homage to the old place. Right. But nothing was different about it. Everything was in exactly the same spot. That's yeah. crazy. And that, the rest of the place though was it was just such a cool place. I but wanted, yeah, I, I wanted to go them. back to your like contract though. I, I I think I'm I'm guessing that it gave you a lot. 
I don't know, it made you feel better once that contract came to be because, like, as much as Steve and I are the same, I think you are too, where going all in with a contract, it makes you feel more comfortable. Not really. Not really? in radio. No, because uh, radio <laughs> contracts are in favor of the uh, the company that is hiring you. Um, it's it's more for them than it is for you. Yeah, you feel like you have some sense of security. You signed a four-year contract, but if something goes belly up in year two and they decide they want to make a change. The ratings are down. The ratings or, are down, or whatever. whatever the case might be, and they want to they want to go a different way. Your four-year contract means nothing. Oh, really? Yeah. And mm-hmm. Ohio was an at-will state at that mm-hmm. time too, right? Yep, 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 yep. So, I mean, I that means so. like, it doesn't matter if you have a contract or not. I mean, right. it's, it's built yeah. into the contract that at any time they're not it's happy, a, you're the gone. Contract, the only thing the contract really assured you was that if you lasted those four years during the contract and you negotiated a salary and yeah. bonuses – you know they had to. They it, can't. They, they can't back away. They from can't it. back away from what you negotiated yeah. in your contract. If they decide to fire you two years into that contract, that's you got no say in that. There's no that's guaranteed weird. money or anything right. like that, yeah. right? But the, like... Well, the guaranteed money is what you negotiated. I, I, I'll do this. I'll make this in the first year. This in the second year. This in the third year. This right. in the huh. fourth year. My bonuses will be this, this, and this. As long as you're there, yes, you have that contract, and they have to adhere to those. They can't at any point say, well, you know. Um, we can't, we can't pay you what we wanted to pay you. No, I have a contract. But if they let you go you. or like they, they part no, ways, you're not guaranteed the year three no, and four. No, like no, you're no, basically, you're not, yeah, if they fire this you, was your if last they paycheck. they fire you in year two, you don't get the yeah. other two years of the, of the contract. Oh, wow. It's not like professional sports where they have to buy you out. I guess I just assumed. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> not the same, not the same. Interesting. No, you know, if well, that were I the case at, in, some, in some instances, I would, have, I would have found reason for them to fire me. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Let me just take the two years and go. No, no, no. How did that evolve over the, the 24 years, though? I mean, was it always a four-year contract? I mean, is this something uh, that a, you... Yeah, always a, always a four-year contract. Yeah. Uh, towards, yeah, towards the end it started to uh it, if i would have continued to stay they probably would have shifted down to to, to uh two-year contracts why is but that just because uh the longevity involved sure. and, and it just made it easier for for me if i wanted out yeah and if they wanted out you know two years was easier to negotiate than that makes than sense four it makes, yeah it does make sense so yeah, Jake. What is going all in? I'll, I'll shift it back to you. You know, when we talked about this, when <laughs> okay. you asked me, I've got some more notes and I've got some more ideas on this topic. But I mean, I know, what do you think? Steve's been on the notes, man. I, I've been lacking on the notes. I started. Right. Remember when I started with it, and now Steve's got the notebook. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think this topic for me means it, it's a lifestyle for me. It, it's the way it's the way that I conduct myself with most things that I I dive into fully. I, you know, you, with, said, you say that as a criticism. It sounds uh, like a criticism. Of well, I, you know me, Dean. I'm very critical of myself. So yeah, that or a pride thing. I, mean, I, I hear it both ways. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't know. And you can ask my parents in the audience. Is you know, if, if there's something. I mean, I know I always talk about football, but w- when it comes to football, like I dove all in when I was a first grader. I wanted to go when I was a kindergartner. But then, you know, mom wouldn't let me. And then I, you know, begged her when I was a first grader and then went into it. And then, you know, 16 years later, you know, it it was over. Um, And I think that, you know, I would have went further if uh, I was probably like three inches higher, taller. But, um, you know, it it ran its course. And uh, but I went all in and gave everything to football. And the same thing, you know, School, I think it should have been reversed, but I think school was a byproduct yeah. of football for me. <laughs> In reality, it should have been yeah. reversed, but um, you know, I tried my best with school. But most things, it's like it's like whiskey. Like, like when I first met Steve, like from the first time that my dad and I went on uh, the Bourbon Trail when I was turned twenty-one, I've been in it since. All in. All in. I've been learning about it. Um, and it, you know, not just sipping it and drinking it, but learning the history of these these distilleries, learning the mash bills of these different whiskeys and stuff like that. Um, same with cigars. Um, it, it, it's something when I dive in, I go all in, and uh, I, I think that I think for me personally, I think it it goes back to even a, a, a job standpoint too. You know, what I mean, like. Even if it's something new, I strive off of new things, and I love new experiences. 
So it could be janitoring anywhere, but like for the first week, right. like obviously it'll get old, but for like the first week, like I'm like, I'm in it. I want to learn like every aspect of the business. Even if yeah. I am the janitor, I want to know everything that's going on that's intertwined with the business. So sure. I, I don't know. I, I think that's interesting that we did pick this topic because it, it does pertain to all of us, I think, but I think that when I go all in with a with a certain subject, that means learning about everything that goes into either making that what is what it's about. What's I don't know what what's what are the ins and outs? I I, I think one of the ins about going all in is if you're going to do it, and if you decide you're going to do it, um, I think you have to have a uh, you say you're critical of yourself, but. But you also have to have a lot of confidence in yourself when you go all in. Yeah. If you make that decision, uh, I've, I've been in a very transitional phase since I left the radio station. And yeah. I've had a lot of people say, so what are you going to do next? And and my joke was, you know, eh, whatever I want, you know. But it's only been like in the last six to, to nine months where I've decided that this, what we're doing as podcasters and, and seeing the future. Yeah. Uh, looking ahead at digital media, I'm like, I'm all in now yeah. on whiskey business. You know, I'm 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 collecting all my talents and efforts and focusing on trying to make this a bigger entity than it than it is. And that's what I meant at the beginning of the podcast, like when I said, you know, you seem more honed in, more. Uh, okay, you're, okay, you're more. I don't know. You're more driven. Driven. It, it yeah. It seems that like your focus I'm, I'm on in. whiskey, not not taking away at all no no no, no but no. i think that i think you're more serious with yeah. this i think you're like let let's go light the match yeah. i've already lit the match right you know you know i I'm went so what changed though is, is is a good question there uh i <laughs> what was the what was the light switch right you know as far yeah. as you were doing it passively so, uh, i was I, I was doing it I, I, passively I, not I was, a negative it's not a negative not but a, it wasn't no, like was your it, focus you no, know it wasn't, something it's that you like, did it was every something week. that i enjoyed to do it's yeah. something when i was at the radio station and we started the podcast it was a nice little uh, uh break from how i normally broadcast and it was nice sure. so and, and, and i enjoyed it but uh I, I don't know when the when the light went off exactly to tell you because i i i think it's more a case of it just Wow, I'm really enjoying what I do, and then and I don't know. Maybe it was reading that, uh, you know, reading the industry newsletters that saying and, and seeing that Sony Music and Spotify and iHeart are are spending hundreds of millions of dollars right. into digital media and podcasting, and like, oh, wait a minute, I've been I've been doing this now for almost three years. I'm I'm already in. Yeah. So why not go? All in. All in. Yeah. You want to know what I think? What? I think it was this award. No. You don't? It was no. before that, wasn't it? No, no. It was before the award. It was before the award. Uh, the Columbus Podcast Awards were, were fun. It was the first one they had. Congratulations, Thank by you. the way. Yeah, you you awesome. won two awards that we, night. We, we were in a, we, I wanted to win our category. I don't know why we were in comedy, but when I listened back to some of our podcasts, there, oh, there's, a lot pretty of, obvious. there's a lot of humor <laughs> yeah. in there. Yeah. There's a lot of humor in there. So I guess that's why they put us in that particular category. And I selfishly wanted to win that category. I did not think in a million years we would get podcast of the year because there's, there were so many other uh, potentially great podcasts out there, but I was thrilled. But no, um, did it give me a little boost in, in, in confidence? Did, did it, did, was it like, oh, wow, maybe more people enjoy us than I realized? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. But the decision to go all in and, and, and make this more than what it is right now was probably uh, months before that. It okay. may have happened. It may have happened when when the awards actually came about and the nominations yeah. were were taking place. Maybe something went off there. Well, the reason why I think that is because it's the same thing with m most businesses where, or most most startups, right? Mm -hmm. Is you know the first year is kind of like, well, let's see what we're going to put all we're going to go all in regardless, but we'll see what happens. Right. And then the second year. It's even it's it's ten times amplified because mm -hmm. it's you've already seen the numbers, you've read the statements, and it goes to what can we do next? Yeah, I mean I think there's a bigger bigger timeline than that. It's not just one year. I mean, like as Dino said, I think it's actually a good good uh, 
I guess not metaphor, but it's it, it, it very similar to business as well. I mean, when you're doing that, when you're doing something, you start up, as you said, Jake, you know, year one, you're, you're almost prepared to not do as well as you kind of want, you know, but you have to be in a sense all in. Yeah. But I mean, it could be year five or six or, or shit, 10 before you really get to a level. You never want to accelerate that. You have to, you have to build up with that, but you have to have the mentality, in my opinion, that that you want to do something with it. Mm-hmm. You want to do something. You're not just doing it because, hey, wouldn't it be fun if we did this, if we started this business, if we started a podcast? It was always something, and Jake and I talked about this in, in great detail and in great length doing even this podcast where it was, if we're going to do something, it's like, what, like, what's the purpose? You have to do something with a purpose. It's not just, I mean, if, we're, if we're just going to get together on Wednesdays or Thursdays and drink like we were, you know, like in the garage, and we try a new whiskey, we talk about it, you might post something on social media, but you start the camera, you start the, the mics, you, you try to get something out to the audience. It's like, it's not just people sitting around talking. Yeah. There is some sort of a, a purpose to the mission of it, which is more like a business. It's, it's more of like, what is the mission statement? Why the fuck are we doing this? Yeah, and I'm horrible at business. I'll be honest with you. I, I'm all in. I'm going to repeat that over and over That's again. That's how it happens with the topic a lot. Uh, I'm all in <laughs> on, the, on the creative side of it. Definitely, but when it comes to the business part of it, that's probably the I don't I don't I lack the business acumen that some people have to like I don't always know what the next step is supposed to be in order to take this to the next level, and that is when I I need to seek out the the people that that can come at this thing from a different from a different perspective. But I think that's a good value. Yeah, I mean I you honestly know, uh, yeah, but I because I, I don't I know creatively where I want this to go. I know creatively how I want to do it. Uh, I want to continue to grow it. Like you said, yeah. we were doing the premise, which is the offshoot yeah. of Whiskey Business. You're three ep- episodes uh, in. Three episodes in. It's been once a month down at Shadow Box. But whose idea was that? That was John Whitney's idea. Okay. And, and John Whitney's idea to come up with the premise. And all we did was collectively as a as a creative group, you know, bring it to fruition. Yeah. But it was his initial idea. You combined two of your strengths. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. To, to have some, and, and have some fun. And we said we wanted to start doing more uh, out there live things you know we we, we want to start going out more live we want to start doing whiskey business shows oh, absolutely at bars and and restaurants and eventually uh, comedy clubs uh, you know i have a uh i was talking with dave stroop from the funny bone um who who books the funny bone and you know he says well, whenever we're ready we're going to do a whiskey business uh comedy podcast yeah. show it'll be three comics Going up and doing 15 for the audience and sitting down talking for 15. Sure. And we'll have a 90-minute show. And I I envision that creatively, you know, that being a thing that I could eventually take on the road. And, and do some place and, and, and fill other comedy clubs or, or theaters. Well, and you're hitting it twice, be. right? So, I mean, that's the, that's the business side of it is that now you have people listening while you're doing it. So, that's an immediate gratification right there, right? Mm-hmm. So, it's immediate success. But then you're, you're also publishing that, correct? Right. So then there's the podcast part of it, which is a whole nother audience, which is, has the potential to be huge. But with your creative side and, and being all in, I think that brings up a good point as far as knowing your strengths on that is knowing what you're actually committing to. Because you, can, you guys can do, and when we were there, I had a great conversation. I think anyone that listened to it or anyone listens to this podcast, it's something that's, or, or listens to the reviews of the bourbons or the, the cigars. There's, there's, there's value there. But yeah. If we're just doing it, you might as well turn off all the right. the mics and the cameras, and you're just doing it to the to the wall, basically, or the you know the three people in the garage. Unless you have something as far as someone else that has a vision, or at, collectively you have this this mission to be like, so how do we get more people to actually know that we're doing this? That's so that's that- where you you got hired in at a radio station, or you get hired into a comedy club. You're not running a comedy club. No, you're not running the radio station. You're 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 the one that that, that is more or less the the talent. Right, and you put on a great show, no matter what it is. But as far as like, like I said, if no one's tuning the dial to your radio station, then exactly. then what's the point? I don't know. I there don't is want none. It and I, uh, huh? There, there really is none, unless it's your, it's your a therapy session for you. Yeah, but a little <laughs> you know, something like, hey, you want to pay me, and no one's listening. That's cool. Yeah, but they're not going to pay you if no we're one's listening. Constantly trying to figure out how to get more. You know, when in the social medias. I mean, Absolutely. I, I, I. I Come over here the second time here, and and I sit here with a a little bit of of envy, a uh, good envy, and the fact that you have this set up now with the Facebook Live, and you were telling me all the all the uh, the technical aspects that go into uh, feeding into the Facebook Live, and at the same time you're doing this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, wow, we need to do that. We need and we need to get more people. How do I do that? I don't know. I stumble in that yeah. particular area. 
um, creatively. I know what I want to do. But then there's that's a that's a business side of it that I'm not yeah super knowledgeable about how do you get how do you get the message out how do you get more that's followers how coincide. do you get more subscribers and we've increased our, our 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 active listens you know when i left the station we had on average you know uh, 400 active you know downloads a month and now we're up to like almost 3000 yeah you know so that's you're huge 3000 a month I got or three thousand an episode uh, or a month. We're we're we're, we're averaging uh, uh, close to somewhere between twenty seven hundred and three thousand active download listens a, a month to whiskey that's business. Great. Yeah, which is and that's a growth like, because that's something that four hundred uh, to almost three. Yeah, that's yeah. huge in a in, in, in a year. And that'll time. that'll exponentially grow. Obviously, I hope. hope. I, that is the it? hope. I well, that's the hope. I don't right? know. Is that, is that, that did we did we did we max out? You can't scale it. Huh? You can't scale it. You can't. That's well, I mean, the whole thing. Is that's why Steve and I work together. Because, like, you know, Steve says that, you know, how are we going to do this? That was his first question. Mm -hmm. Mine's just, like, we just got to do it. Just got to do it. Like, just start it. And then his next question is how. You know what I mean? Right. So it, Yeah, it's, there's a practical side of it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's the whole thing. is like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we could do this? It's like, yeah, it would be cool if we were doing that or could do this. Yeah, but so the first question, I mean, yeah. my, I, I'm, what I'm saying is, is that there has to be both parties involved to make something great happen. There's not just, like, one person that says I'm going to go all in. It's it's like the one per you know, when I came to you and said that, granted, we did already have people that said that this would be a good idea. It is so, a good idea. It's a great idea. So, I mean, and then, you know, and we've already talked about it and discussed it, but it's, you know, like we already wanted, we already had people that wanted to listen to the cigar and the whiskey reviews, but how do we make it, you know, Steve's question was, is how do we make it different? You know what I mean? Take so, it up a notch, you right? know. Yeah. So, and that's and that's what we've done. So, I think that like both sides are valued. I think I think that there's a cause and effect there, where you know we're either we're, we're talking about two different things, but the cause and effect is, is that you know the first thing is you have to start it, and the next thing is how. Because yeah, you if, have you to make if you that don't step, yeah. If, if you don't start talking about it, then it never then it never will happen because most people right. you know that want to that wants to start something and go all in unfortunately they already they're already looking at the steps and before they even look at the steps they don't even know how to start it right well you have to actually start it. i think that's a really good point and, and i think that's something and where, more people get bogged down they'll, well, they'll like look at the steps and then they'll be, get bogged down well, by it and they're like well you know and, and then it just gets put off well, so that's something that, that I've always struggled with and, and just kind of the way that my life has has transpired is something that going all in was just, it was never really something that I actively did. And so it was something that where I didn't, I think you're talking about overthinking and that's a huge yes. hurdle for going all in. But a lot of the steps in my life, you know, it was like, okay, you go to high school and then college is the next step. That's what's expected. Right. Didn't really care where I went. Right. I didn't know what I wanted to study. I was told that I have a deep voice. Then mass comm came. Then I was like, I don't like this at all. <laughs> where I was going, I was at Miami University. So it wasn't like a broadcasting school. It was just basically like the production side of it. So it wasn't what I wanted to do. What was mass comm? Ma mass communication. Just the so mass communication, a lot of schools, it's all facets of, of the communication right. industry, right? Okay. So radio, TV, uh, even print media, everything, <laughs> basically. Um, but, you know, going through the lecture classes, you know, all the prereqs and all this stuff, I didn't really enjoy it a whole lot. Ended up being a sociology major because I was actually interested in it. But then it's like you graduate, you know, high, uh, college, and it's like, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to do more schooling? It's like, I don't know what I want to uh, do. And then all of a sudden, I was with a moving company in the summers, and they were like, hey, you want to come be a manager when you graduate college? I'm like, okay, that sounds good. And then it was like, hey, you want to do this job for us? Okay, that sounds good. I don't really like doing this anymore because two years have passed, and I'm kind of bored with it. I was all in at first, to your point, Jake. It's like when you first get hired in, but then all of a sudden, I kind of get bored, and I get stagnant. So I'm not really all in anymore, yeah. but I don't know what I want to do next. And this went on for a decade in the, yeah. the, the, the wow. career. And then in personal life, it's like I had a, a college sweetheart and, and, and love her to death. It's like, well, after a certain amount of time, like you, you got to get married. And it's like, well, that's that's right. You know, so it's like I'll go all in on that. And then it's like everything else around you is changing and all this stuff. It's like it, it wasn't that I got bored all the time with everything, but it was I never really, I think, assessed my side of it and I think that's a big part about going all in when you're making like Dino making those decisions you know making these career moves and other moves in your life personally it, it gets to a point where 
if you just go all in because you're unsure, but that's the best option that you can think that's the next step, and that's what I did in a lot of aspects of my life, that's where I, I learned so much, and, and I'm about to turn 39, and now pushing 40, I'm finally at that point. Maybe I'm a slow learner, but I think I'm not alone in that. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm pushing 40, and it's like now I <laughs> have shaking his head. I have yeah. more of a, of a not, it's not a confidence level as far as being cocky, but I have more confidence level of what I want out of my days. And, and what I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to get behind. And when we talk about the podcast, Jake and I, it was always my biggest thing was, yeah, how are we going to do it? But it's like, what do we, like, we have to do this with a purpose or yeah. else I know for me on my side of it was like, I, I don't really want to do it if we're just doing it to do it. You know, it, it's a hobby, it's fun and we get together, we have a good time, but it's like, if we're not going to actually do something with it, it's. I don't want to go through all this effort just to do it no. and no one's listening to us because at that point it's it's almost a waste of time for me. See, I struggle with that. Because I wanted to do it so that if we're going to do it, it's the same thing with everything else now in my life, with my, my, my relationships, like with the house, with the job and everything else. It's I, I My biggest struggle now is like what is the next step because I, I, I am all in and I, I, I only get frustrated anymore is because I'm not losing passion. I just – if I start standing still or if I think that there are, there are outside factors that I can't control, that's where the frustration lies because now i got to figure something else out. It's, it's interesting. You know, by going all in sometimes, is, and, and I, this is my own personal reflections in the last year again, uh, sometimes going all in in some aspects of life means staying out. Yeah. Um, what do you mean? Well, I'll tell you exactly what I mean. The, the, <laughs> the biggest uh, amount of scrutiny I've gotten in the last year, and it's all, it all comes from a, a good place. It comes out of concern, and it comes out of worry. Your mom is sitting right over there. You know, I talk to my mother uh, you know, three times a week, and ever since I left the radio station, she's been nothing but beside herself with concern as to what I'm going to do next. And has anybody offered you anything? And I said, and, and what I haven't told my mother is that there have been plenty of things I probably could have done in the last year. But what do you want to do? Uh, but they're not <laughs> things that I want to do. They're not things I'm right. not. I'm not going to do something just to do it. You know, and I, I, I love that. Yeah. I, I, I thank God yeah. I, I knock wood on this cigar case that right now I'm in a position where, you know, my hand isn't forced to have to do that. So you're in a good place that you're able to, to, right. to take the time for to now, think about it. Not and forever. I, side note, moms will always be moms. I love right. the fact that you're talking about that. Right. They will always be mothers. Because you, you bring up Jake's mom. My mom's the same way. Your mom's the same way. It's just like they're always like, just, I just want to make sure you're okay. And, and, I, <laughs> and, and I, I love that. And I tried to tell my <laughs> mother. I, right? I tried to tell my mother that. I go, <laughs> Ma, I said, Ma, I'm not going to go in and do something that's at, at 60 years of age that I'm going to be miserable doing you know, five days a week, 40 hours a week. I'm not doing it. I don't have to do that right now. She's, also, big key, though, she's also really happy with the cash strength. You know? <laughs> she is. Uh, well, that's good. Yeah, drink up. That's drink what 128 up, proof will do. <laughs> <laughs> and then call my mom and tell her, like, don't worry about him. He's, he's okay. <laughs> don't worry From about him. He's fine. To another, he's okay. <laughs> but, you, but you get my point. Sometimes going all in means, make, making, means making a conscious effort to stay out of something well, as that, well. Because goes, you believe in yourself. Yeah. You, that, I believe that's in me. Exactly what I, yeah. Turn it around, huh? Well, it's, it's I the believe confidence in, me. in knowing what you want. I'm all in on me. I love that. So you know, I'm not going to just do something just to do it. I'm going to do whatever I do next. If all of a sudden you see me uh, doing something, and you go, "Wow, I didn't think he would do," that. it's because I wanted to do that, and because it has interest to me, and there's a, there's there's got to be some passion behind it. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people don't think like that, though. No, they don't. I, and it's I, weird that I the way I think or the way other people think about the way other people think about the way, how they perceive it. Yes. OK, because they think and, and we do this a lot. I, I never realized how much we say it until Spencer said something about it. But a so lot of Spencer, people. Yeah, we always lump a lot of people or the majority of people because I, it is. It's true. Is that I think people they they expect certain expectations of you based on your past Mm -hmm. and when something comes arise or arises or something changes in your life then and you go a different route it's like you're doing it wrong 
Right. And it's like, how do you even have the same, how are you, you allowed to have those expectations of me about me? <laughs> it's like if something in this, in this wonderful world of, of, of bourbon and whiskey, if, if a job opportunity arose out of this for some reason, somehow with some company or something, mine almost did. Um, <laughs> I would, I would consider it. Right. Yeah. Because I'm passionate about it. It's cool. I love the I love the people that are associated with it. It's I awesome. think I, I think I could bring something different and creative to the table. So I, I might embrace an opportunity like that. Sure. You know, it, 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 and and not compromise on me. But again, it would be ha- it would have to be to your same standards. Right. It have to be something that I would like. I. It, it's it's funny. I actually contacted in the last year because i went through a little bit of a, a malaise if you will wondering about what might be next and and where i might go and what i might do i actually contacted just for the the shits and giggles if you will mm-hmm. one of the, a, a career consultant and had a good conversation with them like a headhunter yeah you know, not like a headhunter more about one of these places where they sit down with you and they, and they analyze your career, what you've done, and, and then they try to develop a, a, a lifestyle profile as to where you might be able to go Do next. Do a personality and, test yeah, and all that and stuff. What, Outplacement Yes, yeah, you know, it's like, well, you know, what... What what do I what could I bring to the table someplace else? You know, other people. Did you said, talk about like the was it like the animals like the eagle and the? <laughs> no, did you talk, hear? Have you heard about that? No, that's we that's talk all about animals. New. I don't know. Yeah. 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 just told me about that. It's like animals. the eagle, the rabbit, and the fox, and it whatever. used to be yeah. a disc profile. That, yeah. that was, that's it. But you know, it's like <laughs> it's like twenty. You're twenty four years in radio. You could you could work for a nonprofit. You could you could do something yeah. with charity. You know, you've got a respected name in the community after twenty four years. There's a lot of things. Outside of the that's for sure the, the box that you could do, and I thought okay that that could be interesting too. But then I thought one thing that I won't be able to do and I won't be able to compromise on I can't see me going to an office at nine o'clock in the morning and you just don't want to do it anymore and coming out at five. I haven't done that since I was twenty seven years old. It doesn't yeah. even sound like you did that with Sonny. No, Sunny that was no because Sunny that was different. I mean, you, you got up at four o'clock in the morning. Show started at five. Show was over at ten. You had a meeting. You were done at noon. And for a guy like me that has other creative uh, ideas, thoughts, ambitions, I have the whole day now yeah. Yeah. and the night to do to, to to focus on these other dreams and ambitions. It didn't limit me. No, you know. Now, if I would have had an office job at Sunny ninety five, where I went in at nine and left at five, it would have killed. Uh, you. It would have killed me. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not. Yeah, I mean, you you lucked out to a point, right? Oh, definitely lucked out. I without mean, without a doubt. Sometimes, yeah. I I think I I said this to you guys on the last podcast. I haven't. And sometimes in life, I haven't chosen my jobs so much as my jobs have chosen me. Which you're fortunate that that and, happened. And, you know, that's how op- I feel about yeah. the, the CR shop arose, and everything. Yeah, you know. But uh, you put yourself in that place. Put myself in that position to to succeed, but. You know, I had no aspirations of really being a stand-up comedian. I went yeah. to an open mic, and then I won a contest. And Why'd you go to an open mic, though? I went to me that. I went to an open mic, uh, and that, uh, now you're getting into the the past history of Dino Tripodis. I went to open mics when I was an investigator, uh, and I would go to open mics because I loved comedy, and open mics were a good place for me to chill out and relax. I enjoyed... I needed some laughter in what... Uh, was a very complicated, frustrating, and stressful stressful life yeah. at the time. So comedy clubs were a good release for me. And comedy at that point was experiencing a bit of a renaissance, if you will, in the late 80s. Yeah. It was, uh, it was so you big, were going to, to watch at first? To watch. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember going to, it doesn't exist anymore, there was a place called the Comedy Club at the Ramada uh, on, uh, on Morse Road or 161, I can't remember which. The, where that was 161, 161. was Might it the Ramada 161 Columbus Ohio yeah. yeah it was in Columbus Ohio and I went in there and they had an open mic competition and I watched and I went you know I've always considered myself to have a relatively good sense of humor and I've always thought funny things and <laughs> uh, you know I, I, I'm gonna sign up for the open mic next time I'm back yeah and I did I signed up for the open mic and was I was that out of your comfort zone at the time oh absolutely yeah yeah absolutely well sort of yes because I had performed on campus when I was in college I was a yeah, you know, we had, I was part of a musical duo, Doug, okay. Doug and Dino, and <laughs> Doug yeah, and Dino, Doug and Dino, yeah. Um, 
<laughs> Dumbass. All your favorite <laughs> hits. <laughs> what? All your favorite hits. Yeah, we were All playing. All the bar it. Songs. It, was, it was acoustic stuff. And Dumbasses, we, uh, Doug and Dino. D- right? <laughs> Dumbass, Doug and Dino. <laughs> D, D, and D. Um, but we would also have a lot of spontaneous riffing and talking to the crowd, and that was yeah. part, of, part of our, our shtick. So going up on stage wasn't so much out of my comfort zone, but doing specifically stand-up comedy was. Well, scripted, right? I mean, you were scripted yeah, at that yeah, point. Yeah, I had it all written out. And yeah. I thought it was funny, and I, I thought I had, you know, seven minutes of material to go up there, and I went through it like in four, you know, because I, I, I knew nothing about the, the beats and, and, and milk and a laugh or that, anything that's like That's public that. speaking in general, right? Anytime right. You, like, you, like, practice, you practice. Like, I got a 10-minute speech, and you actually get up there and do it, and you're, like, getting to, like, what you thought was the eight-minute mark, and it's, like, three minutes yeah, in. Yeah, like, and I had shit. a little handheld recorder and I recorded myself and nice. I listened to myself I didn't win that night but I went back two weeks two weeks later corrected my mistakes and I won wow uh, and, and, and then I, I got 25 bucks and then someone said hey man you should go to the funny bone they have an open mic yeah so I started going to the funny bone open mics and started to go up and then they had a contest Johnny Walker whiskey sponsored, sponsored, it, sponsored yeah. A, yeah. a comedy competition that's awesome and I won well, yeah. duh. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, I, I was surprised. Oh. I was, I was shocked. I won. Well, because you got competition. I mean, you don't know what you're going into. I don't into, know, right? man. And then the, the prize was five hundred dollars. I still have the big, oversized check that uh, you know that they give you the five hundred dollars. That's not hanging oh, in the poker room. That's not hanging in the poker room. No. Uh, my daughter had it for the longest time, and she, <laughs> she, when she switched apartments, she gave it back to me. But, uh, but it also came with uh, um, fifteen, uh, all fifteen of the funny bones. To, to uh, open an MC in yeah, all wow. the 15 clubs. And at the time, they had 15 clubs, and you got booked at them twice a year as an MC. And all of a sudden, um, this investigator who now also has 30 weeks of stand up work yeah. as an MC, making not a lot of money, two, right. to, 300, two to 350 bucks a week hmm. at the most. But now what? You know? Yeah. But, but and, I think that that's an interesting point, you know, is because you, it. it what you explained was is that you showed up. I showed up, and then I decided at one point that I'm going to stop being an investigator and go all in on a stand-up, much like I did with the radio. I'm going to stop being this full-time comedian yeah. and go in all in on the radio. Give that a chance. But all yeah. this has led to who you are now, and, and I think that the you know younger people that are looking at you or even people that are just wanting to just go in, all in on their passion. Mm-hmm. It's tough. Ninety percent of it, I would say, is showing up. It is so, like, if you're wanting to go into some sort of business, go to some sort of rally, or like if you're wanting to get into a podcast, like not like you, but if someone that has no experience in this whatsoever, they go to like some kind of podcast conference here in Columbus, right? And you meet people, you sure. learn how to do things. The the opportunities present themselves based on your own actions. You also have to be prepared to fail. Yeah. Right? You have to be prepared but to I fail. Think, you know, you're actually talking about, like, Jake, you know, with that is, is just showing up. But then you go into, a, I think, a very, very valid point when you're doing this, no matter what it is in, in your life, when you're, you're, you're trying to go all in. When you say show up, then you completely explain doing all the research. Right. So, like, that, that is a huge step is, is, is not just – I'm going to drop what I'm doing because I don't want to over romanticize this of going all in. It's just like, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go do this and I'm going to, I'm going to be this, this person. I'm going to have this career. It's you, you're, you're explaining. And we just talked about that last right. week. Too, yeah. You're how explaining that the fact someone that someone up. Yeah. You're explaining the fact that you have to do the, you have to do the work. You have to figure this out. Like, you know, when you go up there, you don't just be like, I'm going to be on open mic and then you just go up there completely un- unprepared because I'm going to wing it because I, some people I've do. Seen, and, I think it takes a very special person to succeed at that, mm-hmm. a very lucky person. But most of the time, I think it's something that you actually have to do the, the preparation work. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'm not saying exactly what you're saying. I, I'm just saying, like, when it comes to people that have a passion and a unique entity, I guess I'll say that, is that it, it's meeting people. It's, it's, That's anything. Networking it's is a networking. Huge part of it. Yeah, it's absolutely. Under, like, it, it's, it's like if I'm wanting to get into the cigar game. On my off time, where am I at? The tinderbox or yeah. a different cigar shop, and and hopefully, you know, there'll be a rep that shows up, and there has been sure. over the past couple of years that I've been there. Right. Or you know, I go if I'm wanting to get into the whiskey industry, where do I go? Well, I go to different distilleries and talk to sure. someone, and and introduce myself because then people will know me, and then an opportunity may. 
I, I'd say, I mean, I don't want to give a statistic, but I, I'd say you have a good shot of you entering into a passion just based off of showing up in those arenas that you're wanting to get into. I think that's a huge step of it, absolutely. And I also think that you there's the what we talked about earlier, the creative side. You can you can go all in passion wise, but if you don't know shit about the business, you don't know what the actual like when they're like, you know, uh, I'm looking for someone to um you know, be on the radio. What kind of experience do you have in front of someone? Yeah. No, I, I don't. You have a great personality and you know like like but when it comes down to the interview process, when it comes down to the opportunity for like you, Dino, like you had opportunity, you had the, the, the legwork that you put in being in front of people, right? you know, entertaining people, you know, I've, when you get to that radio side of it, you know, I've been doing this for this many years. I've been emceeing comedy shows. If all that first part didn't happen and, and then would have Sunny 95 ever would have ever even came to fruition. The only reason I got Sunny 95 was because of stand up comedy. Yeah. You know, I was on the show as a guest, as a comic, and then when I was on the road, I would do phone-ins, and when the first opportunity to be a co-host for the gentleman that was hosting the show at the time uh, showed up, I said no two, three different, uh, two times. The third time, I finally said yes. Yeah. But, wow. Yeah. I, I said no, because I was living out in Los Angeles, and things were going well. You know, I was going on uh, on auditions and having great showcases, and you know, no, 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 no. You thought is, where you were where you were supposed to where be. Where I was supposed to be. And then um, life took a little bit of a turn, um, and it seemed like back to Columbus was where I was supposed to go. And there were other factors involved as well. You know, I had a daughter daughter here who was 13 years old at the time, and and that seemed like, okay, well, maybe I'll go back and and do this for a year, and, and that's an important year in my daughter's life, you know, transitional year. What was the thought process going from comedy to the radio was there any or what like what was what was the main point in your mind at the time i i honestly went in so clueless um i i did not i think part of the appeal even after the course of 24 years was that i was never a radio guy you know, I was, I never trained for radio. I didn't have one of those radio voices and I didn't, you know, Hey, it's, it's, you know, it's seven, ten, ten after seven. Right. You know, I wasn't one of those guys. <laughs> I was, what, what you heard on the radio. You didn't want to do traffic. <laughs> no, I didn't want to do traffic. <laughs> you know, I would, I would introduce traffic. Let's check out traffic. You know, with, with, with Sergeant Bill Taylor, I would do I that or let's check out the that. forecast with whoever was doing the weather at the particular <laughs> time. But uh, as, Whatever you heard on the radio, and, and your mother who who, who listened, we she'll, both did. She'll she'll vouch what you heard we on the were radio. In her Honda Civic hatchback. Yeah, what you heard on the radio was what you Listening were going to hear you. if you saw me in a in a bar later that day. It was the same guy. There wasn't two different personas. There was it was it was the same person. So there was a uh, the lack of radio professionalism was the key to my success. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's what worked, right? But I love that. Yeah, you I know? love that. Uh, <laughs> And I, uh, I, I, I joking, I don't jokingly say, you know, I, I worked with uh, my co-host, uh, Stacy, and she always said that uh, the deal was, she, she said something like, because I did learn eventually. If you, if you do it for 24, you do learn how to be a, a radio person to some level as far Absolutely. as, the, you know, what you're supposed to do and when you're supposed to do it, you know. Uh, but she always said that I made her a better radio personality, and I always said that she made me a better radio professional. Yeah. You know? Well, once again, going back to that, that complimenting each other. Yeah. Yeah. You so. dumbed her down, and she mm-hmm. smarted you up. I don't know. Yeah. No. 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 I, I definitely brought I brought some dumb into the room for sure, <laughs> in a very clever, charming way. Yeah, it's called entertainment. <laughs> yeah, it's called entertainment, my <laughs> yeah, friend. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, if you take yourself too seriously and, and as well as anything else, and I've been that. guilty of that, I think that's probably been my. It could be anybody's downfall when you start to take yourself too seriously. Yeah. Uh, it, it it starts to cripple you in, in some way. And also, if you believe your own press, I think that also cripples you as yes. well. Yep. Um, you well, know. then you forget who you are. Yeah. I, Explain that, though. Dude, <laughs> I, 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 they'll, they'll go nameless, but over the 24 years I did radio and, and met a lot of radio and, and TV people, uh, 
it, I was always uh, amazed at some of the egos I came across who who people who thought their shit didn't stink because they were successful. Yeah. And and on top of the game, and I'm not being uh, exceedingly humble when I say this, but I never thought that. Not in a minute. The only time I actually realized that there was any of that, that there was any type of impact that I had on on this city, is when. I announced that I was leaving and we did a week long goodbye and that's when I was like just literally sincerely o- overcome people came out of the woodwork uh, yeah the, you didn't re- I, I you didn't realize that you did have somewhat of a of an impact over the course of 24 years that you, that you that you mattered and people would call in with stories um you know uh, about things that happened over the course of 24 years that I forgot. You know, 9/11 stories where yeah. where I talked to people in in length uh, on on the on the air. We stayed on the air nonstop. You know, just talking to people. And 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 one lady who brought up a story that that brought tears to my eyes. And and uh, uh, your mom associated with Children's Hospital. The 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 great experiences that I had there with Children's Hospital and the and the incredible families and. And that that I've met and the and the and the work I've got to do with Desaco and Down syndrome over the last you know 15 years. The Buddy Walk uh, is this Sunday. Um, they still want me to be the host of that. And I, That's and, awesome. And I'm like, really? You know, I, I, you know, I'm not I'm not in radio anymore. And I go, but no, you are part of this family now, and yeah. we want you to do it. So like, I'm thrilled that they still want me. To, I'm blessed that people still think that way. And you know, to think that. Your, your shit doesn't stink or that you're bigger and, and, and better than the job that you have is, is, is a horrible, horrible mistake. Um, you, 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 you can't do that. You, you, you can't do that. You, you just can't. And I, a week doesn't go by where I run into somebody who says, Oh, we miss you at Sunday 95. I wish you were back, blah, 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 so forth and so yeah. on. You know, that, that happens on a, on a regular basis. And I'm always flattered when, when I, when I hear that, you know, but I think that's cause you never lost that that passion and i think that's yeah. the like it's just like anything else in life that people don't tell you when things are good right you know what i mean they're just kind of like you're you're on the radio so they listen to you all right. these years and so at some point like they're not calling in and be like hey i really enjoyed this morning's show mm-hmm. it's just i'll listen to him tomorrow it's you like, know it happened long enough but the fact that you were in this you know going all in topic is that you were all in and you were you were embracing it on a daily basis you were doing it you never got to that ego part you never lost the hunger to keep doing it Mm-mm. that's what you're talking about when people actually you you impacted those people that's the true success that you you've accomplished because you you gave it your all the entire time but i never at any point went i've never had the feeling of a, you know, look at me look what i did look what i <laughs> but done. if you do that you're disengaging at that point right does that, does that make sense? I mean, right. like at, at that point, that's what you didn't do. That's where the true success was for you. At the end of it, when you had that week-long goodbye, that's when people were actually coming out of the woodwork, like you said, and that they, they were giving you all the compliments that over right. the last 24 years, they hadn't called in and, and given you that feedback. Half the time you're around there, I mean, like in today's world, we have, you know, it's even like Yelp or in Google reviews. It, it, more often, in a lot of the industries, you get the negative ones, but you never get the positive ones. <laughs> oh, and then no, they're no. going to be like, "Why did that restaurant close? I love that place." And it's because you never told anyone <laughs> how get, much you love that place. Don't get me wrong. Over the course of twenty four years, when I left, I guarantee you, there's a there's a an extremely large faction of people that's like that said good riddance <laughs> that, 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 and, and, we're, and we're probably they could have changed the channel anytime I'll tell you that happy, I'll tell happy, you that right you now you know I never liked them you know but, but I'm always uh, whenever a compliment or something that comes my way even this last podcast we just did we did the, our, our podcast this week with uh, Travis Irvine that was interesting um, which what well I just like he looked interesting oh you saw a little bit of the Facebook yeah. live we did up yeah. front yeah. it was a great great podcast but at the end of the podcast when we got done I said man great podcast and he said very sincerely he goes no man you're a great interviewer that meant the world to me that's really cool that meant the world to me yeah you know because I, I, I do take some pride in that yeah and, and, and for him to actually say it in an unsolicited type of way it made my, made my night yeah. Good. Great. Yeah. That's that's what I want to do. Nate. Well, I had a question that Dino had actually kind of skirted around earlier. Um, do you think your outlook on your current situation changes whether or not you go all in? And what I mean by that is 
if you think where you're at now, you're happy, things are going well, are you less likely to go all in on something versus if you're down in the dumps, things aren't going well, and then you have this, you know, new venture that you are looking at, like, because you're so unhappy where things are now, you're more likely to go all in on something else versus, you know, hey, I'm, I'm good right now. I don't, I don't, I don't need to devote everything yeah. into that. Is this for the table or is it for Dino? No, for everyone, for everybody, for everyone. Yeah. Okay. And it can, and it can be whether it's, you know, career or relationships, it, it works both ways. I, uh, like I said, this last year has been transitional and, um, I don't know if we, we got into this on either the last podcast here or the podcast you guys did with, with, with me. Um, uh, I'm, I, I, I fight the depression demons on, on a regular basis. I think yeah. we all do. Yeah. Uh, to, there was a point in my life where I was, uh, when I was at Sunny even, where I was severely depressed and it took everything I, I had in my power to, to, to get off the couch on a regular basis. And in the past year, um, where I'd just been floating around with seemingly too much time on my hands and, and no, what I consider sometimes to be no real purpose, you know, for, for 24 years, I got up at four o'clock in the morning and I went someplace and there was some structure to my day. It, granted, it was the morning, but the rest of it was mine to do with that I please. But now there was, you have to make your structure. Now I have to make my own structure, and you know I felt those those demons float in a, f- a few months back, and and they got a, a a good hold on me for for about a month, and it, it wasn't it wasn't good, and uh, that I was riddled with doubt and concern, and but eventually, you know I. I rose back out of it and decided pull up my big boy pants and 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 say okay you know being that way isn't is not going to get you anywhere you know you're just yeah. going to continue to sink sink down into that hole. Does so, that correlate with you getting more uh, I guess into your podcast again? You found that purpose, you, or you projected it into that? No, like, the podcast actually, the podcast actually was was the best drug. That's what in, I mean. In like the you world. filled it, you filled that. You, the, you, the, you, the fact that I had the, the, the podcast at, at that particular time and and through this past year was uh, the best medication sure. uh, that I could have because it it you know it, it brought me back up and out. But at that at that particular nasty nasty month i would notice that the it, it, it lasted only as long as the podcast did you yeah know? and then i'd go shoom, sinking back in yeah. again that was uh, your high for the moment yeah high for the moment but um and i didn't want to go back on 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 medication that i was on in, in the in the 90s so i actually like i said had to pull up the big boy pants and and fight through it on my own and i still struggle with it from from time to time uh self-doubt will keep you from going all in sometimes because uh you, you become afraid and yeah or or less than confident in yourself so um i, I think that's I, nate's did, point did, to the question yeah you know, was you know. did i did i answer the question in some strange way in, well, a, in a long way well when you had those moments of down in the dumps those depression demons that you were fighting right did that prevent you from going all in on something versus like you know, it, it didn't prevent me so much from going all in. I didn't know. I, I I was wondering, what am I going all in on? Yeah. What, where am I? What is next? You know, because I was inundated with that question so often from friends and family that I, that you know, my, yeah, and that I started to wonder, oh, what what am I going to do next? You know, I I have to do something. I, you know, I'm I'm uh, I, I'm not. 75 80 years old where i can just kick back i I, that would make me crazy um so yeah it 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 started to start to play with me a little bit i'm not there now right no i'm not there now busier i've been busier now and and way more focused now and uh the book i was writing i started to hate i i almost took the book and almost i that was so depressed i almost took a match to the book and and oh, burned wow. it up. yeah that's a year and a half's worth of work i almost wow. i almost put a I almost put a lighter to it and burned it up because you you talk about being hard on yourself and i would look and i would say oh, this this 
the, the mood I was in, like, this sucks. You know, what are you trying to do? No one's going to, no one's going to read this. No one wants to, this, you, you know, just chuck it. Thank God I didn't because, you know, once I came out of it and started to read it again and started to look at it again, I'm back to working on it again. And, I, and it's like, okay, I have to finish this. I have to go all in on this. I'm like four months behind on this book, but it was because of that month of, of depression. And now I'm back in on it and I feel better about That's it again awesome, and I'm going to finish it. But man, yeah. I mean, you know, to say that I'm happy, go lucky all the time and, and, and wake up every morning going, I want to kick the world's ass today. No, no. The, in the past year, the world has, has kicked my ass from time to time, emotionally speaking, yeah, for sure. The yeah. stability was gone. Yeah. The purpose. I think, I think purpose is the big word. That's the one I keep coming back to. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I didn't have a regular thing to go to. Um, I've actually been thinking about uh, renting an office. So you have somewhere uh, to go. So a, a yeah, small office. A lot of people do that. A, a small office a outside of my home to Is report that to, to get away from your like day to day. Because your house? I yeah because uh, you know I find uh, you know distractions you know <laughs> things at the house you know it's like uh, I, I'm supposed to sit, I know I'm supposed to sit down and write for the next three hours but maybe I should reorganize my music collection. Instead, it's you called know, procrastinating. I mean, it, yeah, it is called procrastinating. Yeah. <laughs> but if I actually go to a, an office and know that the only thing I have to do there is work, you've ingrained yourself with that though over the last twenty four years. Mm -hmm. You know, the traveling with the stand up and everything else. I mean, that was the the there had to be a transition there too when you weren't traveling anymore. You were just doing the, you know, I go into the office of you know five a.m. every morning and all that stuff. And then when all that ends, now it's. It's again. It's this. There is a there is a purpose to to structure as well. But I think the radio, you, you know, was 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 just a. Uh, it just it. I was still being creative every morning. Yeah. And right. being on the road as a stand up, where you're writing jokes and writing new material. Yeah, you're being creative. And the radio gave me an opportunity to be creatively different every day. You know, different topics, different things. And but in the the essence of what you're talking about, though, is that now you have no one telling you what to do. Right. There's no structure. Right. You would think from the outside looking in that that's where the creativity would actually really blossom. At times. At times. but Unless you're critical of yourself. Well, yeah. no. To your point is that when you don't have anywhere to go, you're talking about doing an office space. Yeah. Right. You have nowhere to go. You just wake up and now you have to force yourself to right. be creative. Now it's you pushing yourself as opposed to you had to report to at least something. Yeah. And the phone rings and people call and they and they and they, and they text and you know <laughs> I keep going back to my mother. My mother will call and yeah. and you know where you know and I sometimes I hate it when I when I hear it on the uh, I I actually uh, hear her. I'm home and I can hear her saying, "Well, where are you at eight thirty in the morning?" Where, where, you know, and I'm like, "Oh shit, I'm right here, but I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Not doing anything. <laughs> Not doing anything. I'm you right can't here. screen the call either. You, you, can't. you just can't. I don't want to. You know, well, call me when you get back in. I'm like, ah, shit, I'm in. I just don't want to talk. I to never you right left. Now. I never left. <laughs> no, but uh, going yeah, to yeah, going, yeah, yeah. going back to Nate's question, I, I think that we should go through myself and Steve, and then we'll start our closing remarks and about time to wrap it up, right? Steve? Okay. So basically Nate's question, like going, you know, is it easier to dive into something or go all in, whether is it easier to go in when it's good or is it harder when it's bad? Is that the gist? Well, actually kind of the other way around. Okay. Is it harder to go all in when things are going well versus is it easier to go in when things aren't going well? Because you've, I mean, you personally, Jake, you've had a very up and down last year. <laughs> And to say the least. Yeah. And, and not to not to dwell on the negative, but there have been some low points when you were at those low points. Did you find it easier to go all in on the next opportunity that came up? Yeah. Um, mm, interesting. That is an interesting question. You know why this is even more interesting, Dina, is because I explained I've explained a couple of times in the past like month or so that, I, you know, I'm not I'm not afraid of failure. Right. And. and and it comes off worse, but I, I actually look forward to failure because it drives me more. Does that make sense? Yeah, but you don't want to fail all the right, time. Right, exactly. Right. And that's where Steve grabbed a hold of me like, right, when, yeah. when, when I talked about At that. At one point, there's got to be a win. Right. you got to get back up yeah. off the ropes right. is, is the whole point. Right. Is but what, I, what I'm saying is, so, so to answer your question, Nate, I, I, I think for, for me, 
I guess I guess in the last like two years, or I guess since I've graduated school, it's. Uh, I guess it goes back to last week when we were talking with Will and Brandon, where I think when things are going well, and and you're up here, you're you're up at the top of the mountain, you have expectations that are, you know, that may far exceed what is reality at that point because you're so far up the mountain. Um, I, I think when things are going well, it, it may sometimes give you a false set of hope, but I think the hope is great. I think the hope is, is good. So, so does that mean it's easier to go all in when yes. things are going well? And I'll answer. That's the way I'll, I okay. will answer the question is that I, I think that it's easier to, it's easier, not impossible to go in on all things when things are going bad. I'll say, or I'm saying it's easier to go in all in when things are good, but it's not impossible to go all in when things are bad. I'll say that. So when, when things are good, you have this hope that I can do anything. Things are great. You know, I can dive into what all, whatever I want to. Um, I I'm building off of that positive momentum and, and then when things are going bad, you start doubting yourself. You start doubting your decisions. So the structure that Steve pertains to a lot is it, it, it sometimes falls apart in that instance where things are bad. Structure falls apart. You don't really, you're not really sure what's going to happen. Um, but I, I think that, you know, the people in this room know me well enough that it doesn't really matter what it is. I, I'm going to dive in it either way if I have the passion for it is it easier when things are going good yes is it harder when things are going bad yes but it's not impossible not impossible but then it's also hard to to, to figure out a lot like, of soul searching there yeah you know what am I going all in on and at that point yeah. the only thing you can really go all in on is as I said it before in this podcast is is yourself yeah is you well yeah. I think that leads into my my at least answer to that is that I don't think it matters if things are going well or or they're going they're going poorly. It, it's it's what you just said, Dino. Is is where are you at in that? Because again, when in, in my personal experience, things were going well, but I wasn't a hundred percent into I wasn't dialed into what I wanted. So right. you know, when when things are going well, like from a treetop level, it's like oh, you're making good money, you have a stable job, you got a house, you got a significant other, you got you got a car, you have all these material possessions, you know, you're, you're healthy, all this stuff. You don't have any of these like major roadblocks. But if you you aren't really finding your purpose and you're just going through the motions, it's like you're not all in already. Mm -hmm. If things are going well and it's because of your 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 drive, your purpose, you you feel rewarded yourself because this is what you you were all in on on a day to day basis, then I think it's easier to to continue to do so. And if things are have gone bad and you were already in that place where you weren't 100% dialed into yourself and you were just riding a wave and, and things started falling apart, you lost your significant other, you lost a job, you, you, know, you, you got in a car accident, you got injured, whatever it is, you're still the same person whether or not things are going well or, or they're going poorly. So I think as far as going all in, it's not just necessarily like a, a leap of faith thing where it's like you're – things are going bad and it's like i just got to put myself back out there i gotta i gotta get some job interviews i gotta put on my big boy pants there's mm -hmm. there's a purpose to that but that is the internal part of it it's not just being like you know you know going all in i feel like is this outward movement and i, I don't think that in the poker metaphor you don't just not pay attention to that to anyone bluffing around the table you're just like you know what i got a shit hand i'm gonna go all in I got a good hand. I'm going to go all in. There's so many other factors that are involved in that. And I think it all goes back to your knowledge of yourself and where you're at in that, that, that card game at that moment. Right. You don't just go all in willy nilly and just like throw everything to the wind and just be like, well, the chips will fall where they may. It's like, no, fuck. That's a terrible attitude to have because if you get lucky, <laughs> then, then good for you. You got lucky, but that's a short term fix. Because if you're still in that place where you're not in a good place, then you're going to – it's just a matter of time before you haven't fed yourself. You haven't actually learned anything from it. So whether things are going well or things are going poorly, I think you, you really still have to always turn internally and find that, that going all in attitude for yourself. Because if you're not prepared to go all in whether things are good or bad, then, then that's where the real struggle is. 
but I think you'll feel, you'll find more reward in everything that you do if, if things are, if you're you're all in on yourself if you have that confidence and it's not just about self doubt you can the most successful people that are happy they work their ass off they had this this the last decade last two decades and they've succeeded and everything that they've put themselves out to do sometimes that self doubt never goes away just because that's yeah. how they're wired that's just that's how it works some of the most successful people in the world are very critical of themselves type of people most of them are, yeah, yeah. and uh, vast majority. That's what keeps I, them good. I, I think that that falls into what I, I said before about you know, don't don't believe don't believe your own press. All yeah, the absolutely. Time. You know, don't rest on on the on the laurels. You know, yeah. uh, well, don't let other people tell you what you are mm-hmm. or who you are. So, well, the reason I kind of framed the question that way was like me personally. I find myself if things aren't going well and i want to make a change i go all in on that change you know like i like i've done with a couple different careers you know i was in a career wasn't going well so i made a change and i went all in on that change um but sometimes when things are going fine i sometimes just coast you need the challenge yeah and that's that's why i framed the question that way I'm yeah. telling you, if you disengage, things that. are going well. If you disengage, you're not like all that. in anymore. That's it. I agree with going It's a for constant the thing. It's a constant thing. I mean, if you live to be 80 years old and you want to continue to have that growth and everything else, you know, we don't know, you know, again, how old you're, but if you were to live 80 years, you need to have the majority of those years in the, in the, the, the all in on yourself first so that you, you enjoy each day of that because the outside factors are going to change sometimes and a lot of times out of your control. And my all-in attitude, you, you brought up a, a good point when you mentioned age, uh, how I think about going all-in at 60 uh, as opposed to I did at 40 is entirely different. Um, at 40, uh, I didn't pay much attention to the clock you know, that, that was ticking. But now at 60, you know, I hear that clock ticking yeah. in, in, in a much louder, resonant way where, like, Okay, I don't know what this this next chapter is in my life, but I need to start writing it. That and grandfather clock in the house is is getting louder and louder on every hour. You know what I mean? It wakes yeah. you up at night. Yeah, and you're like, what? Yeah. Oh, okay. It wakes me up at night. You know, and I'm not only emotionally, but 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 physically as well. Like, okay, I know I have arthritis in in, in my right knee, but it seems to be worse now than it was five years ago. And, and is that slow? Man, I, and do I need to pay better attention to myself? Do I need to go all in on myself? Uh, physically speaking, absolutely. That's probably the area where I've, I've been in denial the most. Like, eh, I'm, I've been fine all these years. I'll keep being fine. No, no, no. I, I have to start going all in on myself yeah. in that department too. I got to start taking better care of myself. So those are those lessons that you listen to, you know, people that are older than you. Mm-hmm. But we don't listen to them all the time. No, didn't listen to them when I was forty. You know, I'm listening. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm listening and, and, and taking notes. But uh, and and, I, and I'm learning also from from friends that I have who are older than me, uh, who are very successful uh, in their later years. But I also, it's interesting that you know they might be sixty eight and sixty nine years old, pushing seventy, but I. It's amazing that you still see some of the things that they're struggling with. I mean, you're always struggling. Yeah, that never goes away. That doesn't go away. You're always struggling with something. There's always something that if you pay enough attention to it, you will find that is just inadequate enough in in your life. And if you choose to focus on it, it can kill you. If you choose to focus on it and resolve it, that's different. But if you choose to focus on it and let it defeat you, then you're screwed. You're but I, I look at it as uh, if you're not struggling, you're not growing. And, and as soon as you stop growing, you're done. Right. I always said, uh, I, you know, I never want to be I, I never want to be perfect at, at anything, because once you reach perfection, where else is there left to go? You well, know? Trust me, you're not going to hit perfection. You always want to strive Ouch. for perfection. And you always, I always no, want to no st- one is. I no, mean, that, no, no, no. I, I, I get, to, I get I the take point that of like if you're not struggling, you're not growing. I think that was my point is that when things are going well, you can still grow. That's just more of an active thing. Don't become complacent. Don't have the ego that you're talking about. I think there's a, there's an opportunity there that it's it's not talked about as much is that when things are going well, you you can stay hungry and you can you can actually enjoy it. I always said my goal in life is to strive for perfection 
and hope to God I never achieve it. Well, if you can define what perfection is in your life, then then no, strive exactly, for it. you can't define strive it. Strive for it, you know, whatever that unknown en- entity is, and, and hope that you never achieve it because there's no place to go after that. You know, if I write something that's real, I had a short story published earlier earlier this year, and and I was very proud of it. Do I think that's the best short story I can write? I hope not. I hope I can write one that's even better than that one. You know, and. Uh, if we have a, a a great podcast on any given week, was that the best podcast I ever did? God, I, I hope not. I hope that there's one that's going to exceed it and be better than that one. And you're reminded of that when you have a great podcast and the following week, eh, eh not so, not so good. And it kind of, uh, I, I can, wake, I wake can you do up. this. And I, I know with, with the Sanders being here, it's, it's something that I always bring up with relationships, you know, and, and I, I can appreciate that it, it's, if you find the what you consider your soulmate, and you find someone that is your perfect person, mm-hmm. you want to just be like, "Well, that was it." No, you you continue to to grow that. It's okay to be happy. Right. I'm tired of this bullshit about not be, like, oh, I need to like keep you know if I, I need to you know be up against ropes, I need to have that negative side of it so that I can you know really like get after it. You know, to answer like going back to that question. Right. If you find someone or something that makes you happy. Grow it because it can make you happier. Sure. And you can actually, I think where the real benefit comes from is that you're impacting that person or the other people around you, and that's where it's growing. So maybe you don't get as many views or or downloads on a podcast that you really loved. You know what I mean? It doesn't necessarily, you have to beat it, I don't think, or the short story. It's like, can I continue to impact people? Yeah. Can I continue to have success with this? And yeah, you can have your own personal side of it where I want to get better and better and better. But if you get to a level that you know that you are feeling fulfilled, that's 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 my point is that that's the, the struggle there is that can you continue to do that or do you rest on your laurels? Do you just get complacent and coast? Right. Then you're failing yourself and you're not you're not. So you're saying the fulfillment, the fulfillment is is in the constant doing. I think it's some if you find something that makes you happy and you have fulfillment. The way you do that is not always. It's not the the addict side of it with like 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 the other metaphor is like like uh, drugs, right? Sure. You you take drugs for a certain amount of time, and then all you have to do more to get that same high. It's not always about that. It's like ha- can I continue to enjoy this, and how do I do that? And I think uh, I think a, a relationship is a great way. If you're if you're in a happy relationship, it's constant work. Anyone that's been together for a long time, there's highs and lows, but it doesn't mean that it, it, it's. It's like, oh well, it got shitty again. So I guess I'm I'm done. The with lows it. don't necessarily. It's not going to get shitty again. It's like, what the fuck? Sometimes there is a little bit of like, I guess, uh, purpose be- be behind the self doubt. It's it's don't project what what do they make? Why are they pissing me off? It's the fact like, what the fuck did I do to make them pissed off? <laughs> look at yourself sometimes. Right. Oh, I think no. that, I think that's, that should be the first thing. You trust me. But it's not. Typically, it's not. That's what I'm saying. It's a, if you find happiness, and that's be. when I say going all in. Something. A lot of times it's. It's how do you continue to go all in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, so diving into our closing remarks, getting into that, you know, tap time, right? <laughs> what do you What do you thinking, Dino, for your closing remarks on this podcast? And thank you. We thank you, the Bourbon MBS podcast. I, Thanks for the Whiskey Business podcast I, for being here with Dino thank Chipotas. You. I consider it uh, a sincere pleasure to be back here with you guys. It was a great time last time. And uh, an equally great time again. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, as far as closing remarks, what what, uh, what I'm going all in? Yeah. I don't know if I have any closing remarks per se. I think I kind of said everything that I believe in. You know, uh, I think the if, if a close if there's a closing remark, it's it's just to uh, emphasize again that go in go all in on yourself is is probably the takeaway. Uh, and I'm going to say that again because I need to remind myself of that from time to time. You know, I've got to understand that 24 years of radio was great, but that's done. And if I have to, if there's another chapter in life, I have to have the uh, the smarts and be intuitive enough to recognize what what the next opportunity is going to be and and not sit back and going oh man i wish i was you know oh i made the wrong move i i should have done this I, maybe i should have stuck out done no no it's done 
decisions were made and now you have to continue to make decisions moving forward that you, that you think are going to be best for you and some of those decisions might be wrong mm -hmm. they might be wrong and they might be disastrous in the process but once again you'll learn and as we've said before pull up the big boy pants and move on again um i think with every failure there is some sort of lesson of success in the mix somewhere in there if you pay attention to it so yeah. Yeah. i will continue to uh to go all in on on the things that that i believe in and hope that they they come to fruition to, to some extent uh, as long as uh i think if i'm being true to myself i think the minute i stop being true to myself i think that would be the ultimate failure yeah 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 i like that yeah well i'll say this last week we had a really good guest will uh marshman and we started we discussed uh i didn't know i don't know if you know this but september is suicide awareness month i am aware of that so we were discussing depression last week and uh you know through the time steve and i were asking you know him questions and it, he kept saying you know he, he should have brought a couch <laughs> what, 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 a therapy what, couch what was it was will a therapist or was he uh was no, he's my mailman he's your mail okay all right <laughs> But he was discussing depression because he, he's gone through that. And a good friend. And a good friend. <laughs> so, you know, th after the podcast was said and done, you know, I, I hope that Will doesn't mind that I say this, but, you know, he's sitting over there by the garage door and to our right. And I kid you not, until the time, like two hours after the podcast, he's sitting over there thinking whether he said something wrong to make someone think that he was like suicidal or bad or did he say something wrong did he say something he should have not right. have said right something sure. like that we call it we call it podcast remorse <laughs> is what we call it when you know because we've had people say oh man could you think you could edit out what i said about this that and the other thing and, this, and you know if it really bothers them i say so sure we'll yeah. edit it out yeah well if you go live you can't do you it you can't do it live. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's yeah, there yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, i have no podcast remorse over anything i said to, tonight not that at all my my point is is that I think that with the topic at hand, I, I, if I was trying to explain to Will, you know, when he was sitting over there, you know, he was feeling bad about it, and it and one of his main points of the whole podcast was is when he started losing weight, he thought he lost a part of himself because he wasn't this jolly, funny guy anymore. He was he was training, he was finding a new part of himself that he thought was different from what other people liked. And I think what you hinted on on the whole podcast is that, Dino, mm -hmm. is be true to yourself, more, you know, more or less. Over everything is be true to yourself and going all in. Bet on yourself. So, you know, based on what Will was going through, like last week after the podcast, that's what I was trying to explain to him. So I would echo what Dino was saying is, you know, betting – on yourself is the biggest thing and I think for the last you know couple years for me and I've discussed it before on here is that you know me trying to find myself much like you Dino with leaving you know Sonny and 24 years of doing that well football in school was everything that I ever knew right so trying to find myself and trying to find a new passion that I can go all in was a big search and and diving into you know, I, I don't really think I was depressed, but I think I had to make a conscious decision on, you know, whether or not, you know, who 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 am I? Is it, you know, am I going to be a banker with like a Series 7 license? Am I going to be a videographer that wants to make movies one day? Am I, you know, what am I going to be a power lifter one day that, you know, I don't know. It, you know, but I think that, you know, now... You know, diving into cigars, diving into whiskey. I think, I think when I had my interview a month or so ago with Altidus, which is our main sponsor mm -hmm. for a territory rep, I think that was my flip of the coin to to that that kind of lit a match that said it, it gave me hope. It was it was what Nate was talking about. Like it gave me hope on that upward slope really and i don't mean to rhyme there but you know i mean it's 
you know, that was what kind of set it off. And now I've been applying to every rep job and I've got reps that are friends with us that shout out to me, you know, when sure. people either quit. So I think that, I think that those things happened. You're planting seeds. Yes. But why did I, how did I do that? I hung out at the tender box. I met people. I networked. I started this podcast. We started this podcast, and we're networking. And it's a seed. This podcast is a seed that's obviously grown since you started right. it. Right. Right. And I'm Absolutely. diving into the industries. I've showed up, and I think that if people see that, they can believe it too. So going and echoing my main point of the night of going all in, the first step is showing up in the industry that you want to be in. It's showing up where maybe you don't... It's thinking outside of the box, especially when it's something like, you know, like who thinks to be a cigar rep? Who thinks that they want to be like a <laughs> whiskey rep? Did you want to be, Steve, did you know that you were going to work at the tender box and be the manager of the no, tender box? No, I got box? fired from my last job, so... Right. That's how that works. Right. So... But you didn't let but, that firing define you. No, I didn't get into it. I mean, go ahead, go ahead, Jake. But what was he doing? He was hanging out at the tender box mm -hmm. because he enjoyed it. Right. That was his passion. That, unbeknownst to him, that was going to be his future. Right. Yeah, so. but I also had ten years of management experience running a company. <laughs> like that was the other. That's what I was getting. Like when you were saying, like doing the leg. You know, like yeah, doing that part. There were other things that you did. Prior Much like to you that, stand up, uh, yeah, you know, stand and, and, and then when the radio yeah. came up, yeah, they, they all, all, all roads led to that. To but that. I was open to the opportunity when it presented itself. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm saying I think the hardest part is for some people to start, just to start, and I think yeah. where it starts is showing up in the industries that you may not think that you can start in. I think it starts with going to rallies. I think it starts with going to, you know, what whatever, going to shops, yeah. talking to people. I think it starts with networking. Get out, do things. I think that's where going all in starts. It's it's not thinking about the the structure. It's not thinking about like the end of the tunnel. Like where am I going to be? Stop, because you don't know. You have no idea. The first thing is is when it starts, and when it starts, and how it starts is by you showing up to those events, those rallies, talking to people. And I think that's the most important thing for me when we talk about going all in. Yeah, I'll build off of that. Is I think it's as I've already said. You know, summary for me is 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 just the fact that you, it's a constant thing. It, it's not this. It's it, going all in. That 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 topic as it is. It's that again that poker metaphor. Mm -hmm. It's that this is this defining moment. I'm going to go all in. I, I like where the conversation has gone as far as you, you go all in on yourself. This is a constant thing. When you when you make that choice to go all in, there is all of the things that led up to it, and poker's the same way. It's not the first hand that you're at the, sitting at the poker table because going all in at that point doesn't mean anything because everyone's got chips. Right. You know what I mean? So you're like, I've got everyone's got the same amount of chips at the beginning of the game. You're like, I'm going all in. You're like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, okay, there's a buy back in and all this stuff. Like, you're just going to keep buying back. You know, okay, that's not a fun way to play it, right? Right. But it's this constant thing where it's if you if you do this consistent mindset of going all in, then when the, the, the decision comes up, whatever it may be, whether it be an industry you're trying to get into, whether it be a, a big life decision, when you're buying a car or whatever it is, like, you have to be confident in what you want out of it and, and – Dino said it earlier, you have to be also prepared to fail. Like, if you go all in, it, it, it doesn't always work out. No. And when it does work out, you know, Jake, you were talking about the fact that, you know, it's like, what do I want to be? What do I want to, you know, when I see myself, you're absolutely right. Because Dino's a, a perfect example of that. Didn't know what he wanted to be necessarily, and he kept taking these different roads. And you're going two and a half decades later, and it's like, oh, when I grow up, I want to be that. How old are you, Dino? 60. 60 years old. What do you want to be now when you grow up? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Starts all over again. That's what I'm Starts saying. It's like it no one end. really knows. But to, to do it on a daily basis and constantly work on yourself, that's where you can actually answer that question. 
And the other because thing if, you, if you don't know who you are as far as that goes, I mean, that's when I looked at going all in, it was it was all a, a, a more of a. Yeah, there's the, the the skeptical side of it, but it's a it's a positive thing in in my mind. Is that the way you know how to go all in is that you are confident in what cards you have and how how what everyone else is dealing with with that metaphor. And when you when when you you put yourself out there for a job or you put yourself out there for a relationship or as I said earlier, things are going well, you cannot get complacent because if you do, you're gonna you're not all in anymore. You have to continue having that. That mentality that when you go into work, when you when you wake up to that significant other, is that you're still doing it. You're still all in. Like it's not it's not a it's not a you hit that 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 peak and then all of a sudden you you back down because it's real comfortable. You you have to continue to do that. The only time you can actually stop being all in, in my opinion, even with the self doubt, even with the, the the failures, all that stuff, is literally on your deathbed. Yeah. Because any more. It doesn't matter what you do. I mean, you're you're it's it's out, out of your, your control. It's out man. of your hands at that. It's point. whether or not that nurse is going to change your bandage or change your diaper or a bedpan or whatever. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you're you're try to enjoy what you have left. But while you actually can do all this stuff, keep it as positive as you can because that's what will actually feed a lot of that happiness. I think, and that happiness. You kept bringing up success, Dino. Some of the most successful people and all that stuff. That's important. But if that success, as everyone defines it, doesn't bring happiness, then right. what the fuck do you have? That's not you're su- still fucking miserable. It's not success. Yeah, you can actually, yeah, you don't have to worry about what you're spending money on or whatever. But at the same time, it's you, you've lost your, your way. Yeah. That's why you don't set those goals. Like, you know, of I want to I wanna have six figures. I want to have seven figures. I want to have a house. I want to have this car. I want to have, you know, the, the wife. And I've said it before, like 2.4 kids. And I want to have, you know, the white picket fence and all that stuff. Because once you have that, you've. You're 40 years old. You're 45 years old. You're 60 years old. And it's like, cool, I got another 20-some, maybe 30, 40 years left. It's like, what the fuck do I do now? 12. I have 12. A 12 good, don't say that. 12, let's call it 12 don't plus. Don't say that, Nino. Let's call it 12 plus. <laughs> 12 plus. <laughs> but I, I just think that it's a constant uh, thing. That's my closing remarks is that I think going all in is, is a mentality that you need to – it's not – you know, again, throwing it to the wind and being reckless with it. It's, it's, it's literally a calculated and a constant work that you do so that you can actually have the confidence that even if it fails, when you go all in on the poker game right. and they take all your chips, right. you knew what you were doing. Yep. You can be disappointed. Absolutely. But you're also going to belly back up to that table. Yeah. Eventually. Like that. <laughs> Eventually when you, can, when you can play again. When I can play next week, yeah. See you, boys. I'm going home. Uh, yeah, and I don't want to go down another rabbit hole because I know we're wrapping it up, but uh, while you were speaking, it was interesting. Sometimes uh, one of the dangers of going all in, if you care about other people, is that sometimes uh, what you choose to do by going all in comes across as very self-indulgent Absolutely. and selfish. And, and sometimes you have to deal with the ramifications of that, especially the people closest to you. Oh, yeah. I'll because, go ahead and say always. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, it comes across as... I don't as, think sometimes. It comes, it comes across as... Is is like it, it's a it's a fine line to to be able to explain to somebody that you need to do this and and be this and and go this route for you and and sometimes the person or people or yeah. family in your life are yeah. like okay but what about us what about me and where's that where's where does your desire to go all in play into my world well it takes two people it obviously. does take two people it's a, you know and 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 that's that's sometimes it's a it's a tough road and if you're a decent human being and you care about your family or your significant other that factors in to your decision making process but sometimes to your point earlier there is a part of going all in where you don't you know what i mean you said you you know to a point that you're not going going to actually take that step because you looked at everything right and to, i don't know if you're alluding to a, a relationship or whatever when you're making these decisions but sometimes if you're all into that person you do let opportunities go right because again is that really going to make me happy mm-hmm. it's a priority thing it's an opportunity cost that you make it's a decision absolutely you weigh it so well what i will say is that uh, i'll let steve close it out but what i'll no. say is that um you know, having my parents in here, here, especially my mom, and still being, you know, almost, what, 15-plus years, having Dino here is still kind of uh, 
for the second time, third episode, fourth episode of us being together, I think that yeah. I'm still kind of amazed with it. So, uh, d- um, d- dude, I feel I appreciate it. it I was, it's, it's I was a actually you. when you invited me back, I was giddy. I was like, I, yeah, I I'm, like I'm in. Yeah. I'm like, you know, we when you said find a September date and we settled on one, and I, I, I still. I still write things down in a, yeah. in, in, in a book and, and like, yeah, I was, I was excited about it because, uh, these types of conversations, uh, are important. I, I think, uh, to, to, to us self-indulgently to us. Yeah. If anybody else got something out of it, that's a bonus. Absolutely. That's a bonus. And, uh, I agree. And, uh, you know, and I think that there, if you can be honest when you're speaking like this, which I think we have been, um, you know, I, I think that that benefits us i'm hearing myself say things that as they're coming out of my mouth i'm like i can't believe i'm talking about that right now <laughs> that you know? happens in this garage yeah right know. you know yeah. uh but it's happened on on our podcast as well yeah but i i, I think it's a good thing if they came out then uh, obviously they wanted to come out at some point you know so i have the the self-awareness to I have a filter, I so I, I know I know what's coming out of my mouth and what I'm saying and what and and when I'm saying it. So, yeah, yeah, all good, all good. good. Thank well, you guys so much for letting me come back. Yes. I appreciate it. Thank I you really very do. much, Dino. No, thank you we so appreciate much. Appreciate it. If you want to check out Whiskey Business Podcast, you can check it out on all of your podcast streaming apps. WhiskeyBusinessShow.com, yes. uh, Whiskey Business Podcast on Instagram, Whiskey Biz on Tinder, and Whiskey the actual Podcast. Huh? The actual podcast on all the uh, the podcast apps. Yeah, it's whiskey a, business with uh, whiskey. It's whiskey business with Dino Tripodos on there YouTube, you uh, but it's whiskey business on iTunes and everything. Yeah, whiskey business on iTunes. Got it. Yeah, that other one stopped. When's the next <laughs> premise? The next premise is October. Thank you. Oh God, John Whitney is probably going. You've been there for two hours and you haven't mentioned the premise. <laughs> I can hear that right now. Uh, the next premise is at Shadowbox Live on the upfront stage, October the twenty second. October the twenty second. Is it always on Tuesdays? No, it'll be. Uh, it's, it just happens to be on this Tuesday. We're the, the next one in November. I think is on a Thursday. This which, last one was on a Wednesday. It was. It was. As no, far it was as Tuesday. A, it was, was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday. It's been Tuesday. I don't know. I so yeah, we're gonna try to get in on 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 a Thursday in November. And then as the holidays start approaching, everybody's going to get busy. That's the other thing I wanted to compliment you guys on, and it's something that we believe in too at, at Whiskey Business. Uh, I, I admire and respect your consistency. You guys are putting something out uh, weekend, week out, aside from vacations and illnesses and whatnot. But uh, there's no there's no seasons. No, you know, we just we well we, it helps with two people. Yeah, too. yeah. we we go we go. You know, most of the time, well, most of the time lately, it's been me gone. So it's but I think the consistency <laughs> in the in the podcast world is is a key to success. Yeah, yeah. you know, constantly putting something out there. And, and, and being in people's ears and faces, whatever the case might be, uh, is part of the, the uh, formula for being successful in this, in this world, which is exploding as we speak, boys. Absolutely. Yep. It's getting bigger and bigger. It's awesome. Nowhere to go but up. Who are our sponsors for the evening, Steve? You tell me. So, <laughs> Tinderbox at Easton and also an Altidus product, the Trinidad Espiritu. Right. Was this the Robusto? This was the Robusto, yeah. We've been Robusto. we've been smoking too many Toros or, or bigger cigars. That's true. So by the time we uh, get to the end of it, we have not uh, even lit up the second one. I'm actually on my third cigar. I've hit I all, all I've, I've hit all three sponsors. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I'll probably do the BS after the BS Silver Toro, um, but the second. Uh, thank you all to this. Thank you very much for providing the White Series. From Monte, Monte Cristo. Cristo, yeah. Yes. Monte Cristo White Series, great cigar. Um, we featured it as uh, kind of our secondary cigar a lot, but check it out. Medium body, great cigar. Don't forget about Stogie Birds, $5 off. That's up for the next uh, couple, couple weeks. weeks. Couple weeks, yeah. Yeah, so if you subscribe to Stogie Birds, you get a great package. We'll do a giveaway soon. I know I c- we keep saying that, but... Um, We'll do a giveaway soon with a great package of cigars that we inter- or we got introduced to a couple weeks ago with our gift box. Um, so check them out. Stogie Birds, five, $5 off your first subscription. And then, uh, or any purchase, actually, yeah. which is unorthodox for him. It's not just a, like if you just want to buy one, you get $5 yeah. off. Eric also says it's called uh, Ashford Key 
properties in Louisville for your next road trip. He says road trip podcast, but that's the one that is 15% off if you mention the podcast. The BB&B? The BB&B. <laughs> the bourbon breakfast in bed or bourbon right. bed and breakfast, whatever. Dude, if I can get B- 15% off any vacation, I mean, <laughs> <man. laughs> The BB&B? Oh, also, a uh, uh, self-indulgent plug. Um, 10 TV's coming to my house tomorrow morning to uh, do an interview. Kevin Appar- Landers was on earlier. Uh, apparently. Is he coming out? Uh, no, it's not Kevin. It's... Uh, Oh, I can't remember who it is. But uh, apparently Monday is International Podcast Day. No kidding. Oh, wow. Monday is, huh? Monday is International cool. Podcast Day. And they're coming to the house tomorrow morning to, awesome. to do an interview about whiskey business. And You need us there? Uh, no, I got <laughs> it. He's, he's good. <laughs> he's good. I get it. I'll just say that. It's, you know? uh, it's at 730. Ask. They're coming at 730 in the morning. So That's okay. That's all right. Yeah. No, it's uh, So I'm, you know, I'm thrilled that they gave a buzz. and Yes. And want us involved in that, so that piece will run on Monday. They're Very record awesome. It tomorrow. So next two weeks, I also want to mention. Now that you're you're kind of plugging, plugging, sure, plug away. Uh, oh, so goodness. next week we have you on Thursday it. we have uh, Christina Basham from uh, Middle West. Awesome, awesome guest. You had her yes. on uh, a couple of years ago. Now, a couple of years ago, right before she, I think she had just gotten the yeah. the gig with with Middle West. Yeah. So we've got Christina coming on next Thursday She's in the amazing. garage. Where I'm really looking forward. I know we are looking forward to that conversation. Uh, the week after that is actually Eric Espinosa, who actually does our BS Silver. We've done a lot of Espinosa cigars. Um, and then that's going to be on a Wednesday, Yep. which uh, Jake gets to take a night off from, from work to, yeah. to do a Wednesday podcast. We'll make sure we update you guys on that. And then the following Thursday, if you're in the Columbus, Ohio, we've got about 15, 20 tickets left for a prime rib dinner with uh, Clyde Mays Whiskey and also Espinosa Cigars. Yeah. Wow. So, Dino, if you're free on a Thursday, October 10th, it's $50. You get uh, prime rib, veggie, you get uh, potatoes, you get two cigars from Espinosa. Eric will be at the prime rib dinner as well for Q&A. And then also you're going to get uh, the three samples of uh, Clyde Mays whiskey. So uh, something different there. So if you are yeah. interested, yeah. definitely awesome. check out, uh, get a hold of the tinderbox and get your seat before they're sold out. Yes, 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 awesome. yes. So we appreciate everyone for tuning in tonight. Leave us a five-star review. Happy Thirsty Thursday. And check out Whiskey Business Podcast with Dino Tripodis and look for the next The Premise Right on October the twenty second. On October the twenty second, Shadowbox Live on the upfront stage. And we promise you, this will not be the last collaboration. That oh no! The podcasts, these two podcasts, have together. No, so, not absolutely. at all. I'm Jake Sanders, along with Steve Crane, and we make up the Bourbon and BS Podcast, episode eighty six. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers boys.